I was okay. Yo, yo, it's the Mally Bros Podcast, episode 119. Mm-hmm. Um, happy Friday. Big Friday. It's a rainy one out here. Out here. And I showed a visual, so you can probably tell us the kind of shadow. We got the fall vibes going back there. You see it. Uh-huh. Terrence brought a little... You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't tell me that shit don't look fire back this there. This man got the home goods. Uh, what? Is this a tree? Plant? It's fall. It's a fall season. It's a huff plant. And shout out to the people that uh, that locked in with me on my Instagram live. Oh yeah. When I did my bathroom, I, I got uh, some of this stuff too, just to you know for y'all for the podcast. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For the business. Yeah. One hundred percent. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all think I did that? Yeah. <laughs> Showed y'all that. <laughs> I'm using that for my. That's why I work. I use that bathroom for work. Right. That's a work bathroom. <laughs> I got to get ready in there yeah. for work. <laughs> That ass though. Shout out to everybody that hopped on the um the Patreon. In, I'm not Patreon, um Instagram, but the Patreon live stream that we did was dope. 100. percent Always good to talk with folks. I'm super excited about the progress we're making on Mally Bros Twitch. Yes. Um, that's coming fast. That's coming way faster than y'all thought. And y'all thought we was fucking around it with people that said, "Look, heard it all before." We be talking about it. Uh huh. Okay. Hey, look, y'all about to see? We about to be up. I just got a couple pieces coming in the mail, and uh, it's up. And then we'll be right there. We'll be right there. Yeah, but how was your weekend last week? You know, recap the week. I felt like my week last week was more like a mental health, and I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mm-hmm. saying that it was that, but like Loki, I had a dope ass like to myself, like a self. What do you call it? Self love week. I did my bathroom. Read my bathroom. Y'all heard what Terrell said in the last podcast. He was like, get that, get that TV or get that couch, or whatever. I took that shit to heart. I said, bad. I'm redoing my bathroom. Mm-hmm. So I had a good week. I mean, besides the commanders losing the weekend, man. Oh yeah, that shit was that man. I ain't gonna get into that yet. <laughs> Lions showed that grit that they be talking about. Fuck out of here. Man. <laughs> we showed grit. They almost let it slip. Now y'all showed grits. They showed grit. <laughs> they did though. But um, but that's dope. You know what? Get a new shower head. If anybody out there, if you want to really spice up your uh, or or change something essential in your life. Upgrade your shower head. You literally can just screw it off and screw on a new one. Mm-hmm. Change your whole showering experience every day. Yeah. Get some shower head. That's that's an experience. Terrence, right absolutely there. not. The most Why overrated Why do you shit act like world. we're like a... Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to show me that. No, that's the most overrated. Shower head is the most overrated shit in the world. No, it ain't. Do you ever see Into the Blue? It got to be that vibe. <laughs> you ain't seen Into the Blue with Jessica Alba? R.I.P. My man, uh, Paul. They was in a in a they was in the ocean though, weren't they? That's what I'm saying. It's got to be like that vibe, you know. Shower head. Let me tell you something about shower. Let's talk about shower sex real quick. Okay. Random. The water be hot. You have a control over the temperature. Yeah, but who feel like reaching over to the nah? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. The water be hot. That that's the that is my. Who feels like reaching over two seconds to the nah? But then you got it's a this is a joint venture. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm hot as fuck, so I'm about to turn this bitch cold. I think shower sex is dope in a way. You just gotta be in the right shower. I've said this before. You just gotta be in the right shower setting. Nah, for sure you can't. But I feel like that'd be dope because low key, like, you know how you do it with somebody, and then y'all might get in the shower after. Uh huh. Sometimes you know what I'm saying. You knock out two birds and one stone in the, in the shower, and it's a different location. That's like. You gotta be somewhere special though. You can't. You gotta be there. You can't uh, be in the tub shower. You can't be in the step over joint. <laughs> yeah, y'all gotta be in, like if, if it's a, t- a shower with the bench. Oh yeah, that's, for sure. That's some that's some good living right there. Or the rainfall joint. I would love to be able to sit down in the shower. I'm not gonna be tacky and put a stool or something in there, in my current shower. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, wait till you get turned sixty and you can't stand. You Hopefully, I got enough money to have the joint that's already in there. Yeah, look, you'll never make it. I got the cookout <laughs> chair sitting in my shower. Yeah, that's what Gary say. <laughs> the, oh, the foldable joint. Yeah. Well, how was your week, though? We never talked about your week. My week was cool. My week was chill. Um, spent some time with my girl and the fam. Watched the game. Me and my girl watched the game together. She ain't really into football like that. But guess what? You watching. You're going to sit down and watch this Russell Wilson game with me. <laughs> 
But I too that's my ride of the week. Uh, both wild yeah. jerseys. Mm-hmm. It was dope. That was a vibe. So. I was going to say, I, too, was watching that game with this man. That lame ass. All the motherfucking game games on, rough. we watching these motherfuckers trade field goals. That game was rough. And we played Sunday night. Whatever. But uh, we did this past week. I guess we could start here. We had a uh, TikTok go viral. Or viral-ish. Um, I wouldn't say viral, Terrell. It did go viral. I guess you can say viral. It did. The TikTok is about, it was about people in their 20s. It was from episode 99, The Rod which is also on YouTube if you want to go and watch it. But we talked about how the new generation is, um, what was I saying on that joint? We were talking about how the new generation, forgive me, y'all. I don't know why I'm brain slow today. But we were talking about how the new generation doesn't, aren't in that I'm about to enjoy my 20s era. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like they're more so like worried about being at the next step. Yeah. And what was interesting about it was the comments of their joint, of course, was filled with a lot of people that can relate. And a lot of the response was more so like them saying why they feel that way. And that shit was very eye-opening, bro. Nah, it was. Because I, me and Terrence are 28 now. When we eight, the difference between us now and even eight years ago, like our generation, we it was people because we graduated early. Yeah. So we got into the workforce earlier. It was people that was trying to party, people saying, I'm not about to just hurry up and do this. Our generation, a lot of us are 28, 29, 30 with no kids Mm -hmm. because people was partying, living their life through their early 20s. But this new generation, they hustling faster than we was. I know I got to keep it a stack. Yeah. They like are working faster than we were, or taking work more serious than we was. A lot more. And uh, the top comment on that joint was, be making us think we got to retire at 25. Another top comment was, because we can't afford ish. We can't afford to enjoy our 20s. I tried, now I got credit card debt. I get that. Older generation always tells us that we're behind and say we're lazy. Like I work four jobs while still being a full-time college student and I'm told this. So, and I feel like, I mean, sometimes you can't listen to people that do that, especially, the, and that's what the, that's the purpose of uh, why they feel that way. Content like that. It's because, but you know what's crazy, Terrence? It was easier for us to keep up because our standard was different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you say you can't afford-ish, what do you mean? Are you talking yeah. about like certain, the way you want to dress or like a lifestyle you want to live? Right. Or are you f- talking about the bare necessities of, of we, if you think about the uh, hierarchy of needs, like where, what are we talking about? Right, because there was, is inflation. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, shit does cost a lot, but like one thing we talked about, I think just last week we were talking about how... Um, when we was coming up, shoes was like $200. Yeah. Now you got these kids trying to wear Balenci's, fucking all types of shit to school. Mm-hmm. And they got a, that's an $800 clip versus when we were just trying to get the, and when we was coming up, Jordans weren't even 200 yet. Shoes didn't even, uh, when the motherfucking phone posits came out and it was 225 it was like, oh shit. Nah, yeah. But our shits was like, back then Jordans was 150 $149.99. I think more so like. I told Terrell, I mean, people were saying, yeah, y'all saying this, but we got to work. We have to work. And it's like, this is exactly what me and Terrell was talking about in that uh, TikTok, where it's like, y'all just feel like that you're behind and that you have to work, but you really are good. Like, yeah, you working and you grinding, but it's all going to end up being something dope for you because you're ahead of the curve. And that's what we were saying. But everybody who was commenting and saying... Well, I have to pay for stuff, and I, you know, we gotta pay for stuff, and it, times is hard. Times been hard. Mm-hmm. Me and Terrell are not from the '80s. We didn't grow up when the milk was sixty cent. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Eight years ago, you know what I'm saying? Me and Terrell, no, not eight. Ten years ago, we graduated high school. Eight years ago, we graduated college because mm-hmm. we went to a two year school. So really, our generation graduated. Six years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's, and let me tell you, six years ago, it was still hard to get an apartment on your own. Yeah. It's still hard to get your own car, have your own phone bill, have your own... With them loans we had to pay back. And I'm not even talking about just me and you, just more so like people are saying the older generation and they talking about me and you. Or saying, y'all don't get it because, see, we got to work. See, it's times is different from when y'all was growing up. How? Besides what people are wearing... And the, the, lifestyle the status symbols. Mm-hmm. 
Besides that, how was life really different? It's always been hard to get an apartment. It's always been hard to get your own car. It's always been hard to have your own bills. We've all always had to work. We I got to rebuttal for you. We just telling them mm -hmm. to just, you're good. We're not saying, oh, y'all got it easy. We just saying, yo, y'all are actually doing this shit earlier than we were. And that's true. And I don't think it's because you have to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I well, think you want, the ra you want the rags and riches, so you got to go and work for it. That's true, but it would be naive of us to not mention the differences because think about it. We bought that um, Honda for three grand. Yeah. We got the Nissan and paid what? It was like 14 grand for the note for that. And we got, yeah. that was only, it's only two years old when we bought it. And so our car in that joint was like two, 300, maybe 250, 270-ish. Yeah. If you try to go and buy a two-year-old Nissan now, that joint going to run you like 25 grand or yeah. 20 grand, 23. And don't get the car notes are even higher. So yeah. there's a little inflation to where it like might I be said, tough, Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying by any means that it's easier or not There's it, that things aren't more expensive. I'm just saying that TikTok wasn't telling people that it was easier. It was telling them like, yo, y'all doing this shit at a way earlier and faster pace than we ever was. And I don't think it's because y'all have to. More so, I think it's because y'all got to grind. But it's like, instead of people saying, yeah, you know what, we grinding and we doing this shit earlier, people say, oh, well, it was because we have to. It's like, do you have to? Yeah. Because times really have not changed that much from eight years ago. It, it really has. Yeah. It still, it was, it was hard back then. It was hard now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's it why really I said, yeah, like, you can't inspire them. We tried to say y'all ahead of the game. They said, damn, it's because we had to. Hold on, wait. But no, y'all do not. Y'all are just some dogs for real. But you got to think about it, T. You don't want to sound like the dude that's saying, you just need to work. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think we said that. I think we just said, like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, y'all are ahead of the curve, but you feel like you not because of what everybody is telling. What, oh, what like society. the dude said, be making us think we got to retire at 25. Like, yo, you don't. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And then just to pivot off of that, one thing that I see a lot, a lot, a lot on TikTok and on just social media, people, period, is people saying, my 20s aren't for grinding, my 20s are for having fun. Before I say anything about that, what you think about that statement? My 20s aren't for grinding, my 20s are for having fun. I think your 20s, it, I mean, it really depends on what type of future you want because some people look at this shit different. So I'm not going to, I am somebody who grinded through their 20s, and now that I'm at 28, approaching 29 next year, um, I'm having more fun than I had in my early 20s now. Traveling, even just living more life, doing more. Yeah. But there are some people who feel like they're going to get to 28 and have to be working and not, they're not going to be able to enjoy their youth. So they want to take their most youthful days and do whatever they want. So to me, it depends on what type of future you're really thinking about. Like what path are you, are you right. going down? Now, if we take out the... I look at it both ways thing. I would say you should grind in your 20s because it's not as easy to be wealthy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like getting harder and harder and harder to gain wealth. Even though there's a bunch of more bunch more avenues, the more work you put in, the better chances you have of being paid more later. Yeah. I know hella people that bullshitted through college, changed their major three times, did 12 years of school type shit to get a bachelor's. And now they got they're now they're working somewhere, or they're working, they've made they're working for a couple of years where they could have worked somewhere for 10 years, and now I've gotten this much experience and qualified for these jobs. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm on the side of you should grind. I'm gonna come smack at all of the people that feel like grinding in your 20s is is out and you wanna have fun. I'm coming smack at the people that agree with this statement. My 20s are for grinding. I mean, my 20s aren't for grinding, my 20s are for having fun. I'm gonna come straight at those people who feel that way. I personally feel like your life is about grinding until you're in a position where you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So did you do what you could to make it so that your 20s can be for having fun? Because let me tell you, if you're somebody like DDG, grinded on YouTube, now he got a career, so now he can say my 20s are for having fun. Or mm -hmm. are you a, you know what I'm saying? Somebody maybe who plays sports or you did anything or you invest, whatever you did to get money, 
mm-hmm. and make yourself comfortable, then you grind through your twenties. But you can't be living at your home. You can't be living at home with your mother, or you know what I'm saying. Really struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, talking about my twenties off of having fun. Because guess what? This shit do not stop. Yep. I think your twenties off of grinding, your thirties off of grinding, your forties off of grinding. Facts. And you gotta manage to have fun in between. I don't like the statement, my twenties aren't for grinding, my twenties are for having fun. Okay, have fun through all your twenties. But guess what? You're gonna have to grind someday. So I guess your thirties are for grinding. But guess what your thirties are also for? Having kids and creating a family. Mm-hmm. So now your grind is tenfold. Exactly. Now your grind way harder. Mm-hmm. So you're just going to put everything that you're supposed to be doing in the, in the back because you want to have fun. And people will say, well, life is too short. Life is short and there are unfortunate things that happen. However, you got to live as if you're going to be here till you're 100. Yeah. And you want to be able to really chill and have fun later in your life. Yeah. A lot of y'all are going to be that great old co-worker that people love at work. You're going to be the 40-year-old working at the retail spot with a 20-year-old, and that 20-year-old going to love you the same way you probably love some 40-year-old at your, your job now. Because they, too, probably thought, my 20s are for having fun. And if you ask them people if they would change some shit to where they won't have to be there, they probably would tell you that exact, that exact sentiment. It's like, I think you should enjoy your 20s, but yo, this is the, you got the youth to grind. You got the youth to stay up and only do, do things for... You know, to so only sleep five hours a night because you might be grinding on something else. I think this is the this is the main time you want to do it. You think when you get in your thirties, you're gonna want to grind more? Yep. You think you're gonna want to grind when your thirties come? Yeah. It's like absolutely not, and you're gonna want to start a family. And then That's when you start your family, because low key that doesn't wait either. You with somebody, y'all y'all doing what y'all doing, things happen. Mm-hmm. Now you're in a position where you didn't grind in your twenties. So now you're trying to grind, but now you also got to, now you're trying to start a family. Now you're starting to make excuses to your kid mm-hmm. why they can't do this and why you don't have this. Because who wanted to have fun in their 20s? Because life is short, but you're still here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I completely disagree with that statement. I'm a Kobe Bryant fan. You think Kobe would agree with grind? I want to have fun in my 20s. I'll grind later. Mm-hmm. Really? Do you agree? What do you feel about the statement, life is short? Do you think life is short? Like, what does that encompass for you? I think life is short because of the inconvenience of like the cycle we in. The person that walks outside and gets hit by a mail truck because the mail truck driver was dozing off from last night or some shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Those are the inconveniences of life that make us say stuff like, damn, life is short. Or even watching somebody like Kobe Bryant play his whole career, uh, 20 years in LA, and then, you know what I'm saying, meet his demise in a helicopter only a mm-hmm. couple three, four years later, right as he's embarking on his next journey. You know what I'm saying? That make us think, damn. You know what I'm saying? He's young. That's only 40 years. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, I think that's why we say life is short, but we don't really look at the people around us that are old as hell and have been here forever. Mm -hmm. And I think there's more people in this world. There's a lot of older, I'm sorry, there's a lot of older people in this world, even when it comes up to 40 and 50. But almost like that dude's comment said, People almost are acting as if they live in to only be 25 or 30. Yeah. And everybody's got this like last minute with people grinding on that, people doing a two minute drill mm-hmm. and like at yeah. 19, you know what I'm saying? Y'all running a hurry up. Y'all running a hurry up. Y'all running y'all two minute drill uh-huh. at 19, 20. It's like, hold up. You need to low key just cool off and understand, yo, you, you actually grinding because low key, you are going to get to do the things. That you probably feel like you're not gonna do. I know what it's like to feel like you're not gonna have kids, you're not gonna get married, you're not gonna get this nice job you want, you're not gonna eventually have a house, but you will. Yeah. If you keep doing what you're doing, you will get there. And you know what? It's a it's interesting, like the just to speak on the um the life is short piece, the people that did die off or or that did that, that people that did die early, like if you look at somebody like a Nipsey Hustle, Nipsey had so much invested, like, he had so much invested, trust for his kids, invested in this and that and that, that he had intended to and is growing even in his death, that he wasn't living like, bad. I'm about to die. He was preparing for the longevity of his legacy. 
Yeah. Like, bet if I'm gonna be here till I'm 90, I'm investing in this shit because in 40 years it's gonna be this. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Or, or in in 10 years, this is gonna be that. And right. if I'm not here, I still put the work in mm -hmm. to make sure that my folks is good. Whatever. That's a prime example because you can't live your life to have fun and grind later because life is short. Right. Because if life's short, what are you going to leave the world? Even if you just got your parents. like, And it's arguable you bring up Nissy Hustle. That's my guy. It's arguable that he's a prime example of somebody who grinded through their 20s, started having his real fun in his 30s. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Start having your real fun later in life. Look at Kobe. Kobe started doing... He was grinding, playing basketball. It was a game he loved, yeah. But, like, low-key, his passion outside of basketball ended up becoming, like, filmmaking. And you can, when you watch him talk about it, you can see he has true love for that shit. Like, real love. Mm -hmm. Like, he low-key was having more fun with his family, everything later in his life because of what he did in his 20s. I think life is short can definitely be toxic as fuck, you know? Because you're telling somebody, you ain't really got that much time to be here. Remember I was telling you your birthday and the fact that we count our birthdays make your life shorter. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because we see people die at a certain number and then we remember our number. And we know the closer that we get to that number, like the clock is moving fast. If we just eliminated all clocks, all days, and we just lived, people say, fuck tomorrow. Tomorrow doesn't matter. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about yesterday. But it's like, there's a calendar that dead ass going to remind you. And you have shit that you have to do that's on your calendar for tomorrow mm -hmm. and things that you needed to remember from yesterday. So it's like, we do live off of today and tomorrow. But low key, it's like, if we did it, you would just be living for whatever's going on right now. I swear the world would be different. Nah, that shit made me think because what if we didn't count our birthdays or days, period, and you just, you're just alive. That's you know why I think back then they used to say that this dude lived for hundreds of years. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> he lived for 300 years and we're built different now. They say that we don't live that long now. But low key, what happened? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We what, started eating you know trash. Oh, we started eating trash. But what was they eating back then that was so healthy? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I be thinking about that though. We're not designed. Like the way we design. Like I be watching little vegan documentaries and shit. Yeah. Where... They were talking about how if you look at a carnivore that are literally made to eat meat, their teeth are made for them to be able to eat meat. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. are the way our teeth are made are not made for like chicken yeah. and like meat. Well, our teeth are dead ass made like fucking herbivores. We should be eating nothing but plants and shit. No, nah, no, but you're right though because like, how do we know they lived 300 years? Nobody what if, was counting. Nobody was counting. So you say, you know what? I just seen, if you've seen a motherfucker for 10 years, you probably think that motherfucker is 90 years old. He's right. been for 90 years. Imagine you didn't look at the clock, right? You know how you sit in there. Think about how fast, and y'all might be able to relate to this if you were in class or you got driving school or something. I remember we was in driving school. I used to look at the clock, and I remember we used to get out of that joint at like 6. We used to go from like 3 to 6 or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember I would just be staring at that clock, and I'd watch it go from, mm-hmm. Three to four, and then four to five, and then that five to six took forever. But I'm looking at every second on that fucking clock because I, I swear I hated driving school. Yeah. But if that clock was not there, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't think it was taking that long. You would actually grasp more what you was. That's what I'm saying. That, 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 those last two hours would I, be more meaningful to you. And I'm not even talking about that more than I'm talking about, like, the time aspect. I would not think it was that long, which mm -hmm. means I felt like if the, if the clock didn't exist, 10 days would feel like 30 days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's only been 10 days, but damn, it feel like we haven't had any idea of what time it is. Mm -hmm. We just living, and it's like, damn, think about it. You wouldn't really have a, a sense of... Think about how many nights you look at your phone and you say, damn, I got to go to bed. Or you wake up in the morning and say, damn, let me get up. Because yep. you, are, you, have a, you live your life around the clock. That's a fact. I if you didn't, do. you would just probably have this nature of you getting up and experiencing life. And then whenever your day ends, it ends. You start yep. over. I don't know. I'm, and you know what? 10.55 for me comes so fast. That's your alarm? That's my, that's my oh shit number. 10.55. I'll be living my life, doing whatever, and then I'm like, damn, what time is it? Every time I hit my phone, it's like 
10 something. Yeah. And like if it's past that 1055 point, or if it's like 11, only reason why I say 1055 is because that's the one I be seeing a lot. But I'd be like, damn, it's already late as fuck. Yeah. Because 11 is late. And yeah. that's why I be like, I got up this morning at 830, went to the gym. I only, I, ain't, I didn't go to sleep until like 330, 345. But I said, you know what? Fuck that. I'm getting up. And now you can go to bed a little bit earlier tonight. That's, that's actually dope. I, I'm about to start doing that too. I'm not going, I don't like going to the gym late. I don't like it. I don't like going to the gym early. Too many motherfuckers in there and I don't feel like being in here with you motherfuckers. But see, that's the thing. If you can get up and go to the gym early though and knock it out, it feel better than going it, after. It does feel better. My stomach was fucked. This morning, but I made this pasta bad. fuck both of our stomach up. That shit was fire, shrimp. I just knew it. I'm I think I used too. I, I I used too much uh that that cheese. That's what was. It wasn't the heavy whipping cream. It was the cheese because I didn't even use that much. Fuck, did you put cheese in it, nigga? It's a pasta. You put parmesan on it. Fuck both of our stomach up. That shit I'm was still fire. feeling the remnant, the 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 aftermath of that, <laughs> the rumblings of it. <laughs> but dope though, because that whole time conversation came on the heels of people feeling like. They don't have time. Yeah. And that's honestly super interesting because if we didn't think, if we didn't go by this clock, people wouldn't feel as rushed. Yeah. You wouldn't feel like, damn, I'm already 21. Because to them, turning 21 is different than us. We was like, bet I can drink, buy a drink. Nah, yeah. I think what's a good practice for everybody is just go on your phone. Especially if you had your phone for a long time. We got a point where we have iCloud and shit like that. Or you got, mm -hmm. like me, my phone, I got years of pictures in my phone. And I was just looking back at 2020, 2019 picks. And I'm like, damn, we went through a whole pandemic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people could have said, damn, I might not be here in, in three years. You look back at them old pictures of where you was at, what you look like, what you was doing. That give you a good little comparison of like, and especially if you've been doing the same thing. You yeah. know? It's like, yo, I, it's actually been three years that I've been doing this. Like, yo, low key, I, there's, there's time for me to do something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like. Shit could change for me within these next three years if I'm grinding. Right. And Otherwise, I, you see that having fun in your 20s, you're going to have fun, but like, you really going to keep the fun or does it does fun just happen? Yep. But shout out to everybody that hit us up on TikTok. Mallory Bros. TikTok is up. Yep. Mallory Bros. 9 on TikTok. Let's go. All right. I had a hot, not a hot seat question for you, but it's just a funny question I want to ask you. I think I asked you this yesterday. The question, can I kiss you? Do you think that you should ask a woman that, or do you think that you should just go in for it? You should 100% just go in for it. Yeah. You 100% should go in for it. Or you could be creative. If it's first date type shit and you want to be respectful, this is a very, but you got to ask in a, a different way. Can I kiss you? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I think a worse question, like, I don't know. I feel like you have to know when the other person wants to kiss you. Like, it's just a way y'all look at each other. And you can tell if they not really, if she's not really fucking with nah, you. Nah, yeah. Even if it's the first date. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason why I ask this real quick uh -huh. is because we all, we do live in a different time period. Where going in for it could look a certain way. That's true. And a certain woman might respect the question being asked. That's a fact. Because, because I mean, either way, you're not not doing it. You're not going at home and saying... Yeah, but women you know? also, it's a, it is a fine line because some girls line. like you to lead and just do it. Yeah. Fellas, go ahead, Terrell. Consent is always the safe route for sure. Cause it's, and it's not women's fault. It's because there's a lot of creeps out here. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That have got us to this point. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to say, like, you got to read the, y'all, everybody has a bio field of energy that they give off. Mm -hmm. You can feel if that's what's about to happen. I'm not even going to lie. Biofield. That's funny. You want to I was. I'm in your biofield right now. I'm feeling like your biofield. <laughs> you want me to do things. I am somebody that was a shy first kisser. Even mm -hmm. all the way back to like. Your girl now? High school. My girl now kissed me first. And she won't let me. She won't let me live down the fact that I, look, was consensual and didn't want to push it. It was our first date. Mm -hmm. But. I've always, I had always been like a shy first kisser because honestly, bro, that shit, did, that shit, even back then was like, I don't want to, I never want to be the one that's like, you know what I'm saying, would a girl do that to you? Mm -hmm. But you got to be that. Fuck it. Nah, yeah. You can tell a girl when I kiss you when she keep looking at like your mouth or your lips, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or like, fellas, I know it's going to be a weird, it's going to be a weird, you know what I'm saying? energy because like you, you take a girl out for the first time i mean i took this girl out 
we went to this restaurant and she was dry to me the whole time. She was like, dry, dry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think she was feeling me. I think I was in over my head. I think she was out of my league. That's just me keeping it a hundo. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I did my best. You know what I'm saying? When I got back out from her crib and I got out and I gave her a hug, she gave me a hug. And the way she looked at me, I was like, nah, the vibe not there. Yeah. She ain't really been feeling a date for real. I ain't even really, she ain't really like she had a good time. So I don't think I'm letting anything fall by not kissing her. I actually felt like if I would have pressed the line, she'd have been like, mm -mm, no. <laughs> so like, I just didn't do it then. But like, there's been other times where you're going to, this is how you know a girl want to kiss you for real, at least for me growing up. If we get to your crib and you're not automatically ready to go inside, if she, if she trying to sit out there and talk to you and stuff like oh, that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You might be able to get one off. You have to put yourself in a vicinity, though. Yep. You can't be leaning on your door and she leaning on her door. And then you come 90% <laughs> of the way over to her. Nah, you need to go you know 90. Saying? No, no, no. But that's what I'm saying. If she over here, that energy to me... Think about it. We in a car, car. You know what I'm saying? In the car, right? Uh -huh. If she's over here, that energy is like a... It's like a, I'm a away from you energy. You know how a girl talk to you and she like... Is that you like how I'm talking to you right Talk now? Talking to my, my nigga. She's actually, she, 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 right, like how I'm talking to you right now. Uh -huh. Like she kind of leaning towards you to the point where you could just lean towards her. Like I feel like women that want to, that, would, that wouldn't mind. Man, you the girl you. that want to kiss you might be leaning on that door and you well, need to come 90. But we'll see. Think about how fucking aggressive <laughs> that is. Nah, but sometimes if you come 90 and get rejected, that's going to hit your chest. But that's where can I kiss you comes in. And you might not want to say, can I kiss you? That is why. What would you do if I kissed you right now? Is a common. That is a common. <laughs> what, would you, what would you say if I was feeling like kissing you? <laughs> don't be the what would you would have done if I would have tried to kiss yeah, you in don't the text later. would have done. Nah, <laughs> you have to do that shit right now. Yeah. Have you ever or been look, that or just don't say nothing. Have you ever been that person? What? The what would you would have done if I would have? 100% <laughs> I said I should have kissed you. <laughs> I felt like what was I don't know what situation I was in, but I know it was plenty of times where I like, high school, middle school, mm -hmm. bullshitting around. I'm gonna kiss you out the class. Y'all meet by the lockers before y'all leave. You don't do it. I remember my girlfriend. I felt like in middle school, I was supposed to kiss her, and she was like, well, "I want to kiss. I want to kiss or stuff like that." Right? I was mm -hmm. standing outside, just standing around, heart beating fast as shit, hands sweaty, knees weak, arms is huh? No, arms palms is heavy. are sweaty. Bottom line. <laughs> I was looking at her and look, the buses, it was getting to the, look, you remember you had a certain time you had to get on the bus. Make so that said, bus. My bus about to come. Look, gave her a hug. <laughs> Didn't kiss her, was walking away like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> then later she hit me off the, you, you <laughs> shut up, you shut up. And I felt dumb as shit. But look, that's a part of growing up. That's a part of growing, part of growing up, up. And low key, these days, fellas, you just gotta say fuck it. No. Not not press the line heavy, but like your, low key. If your girl asks for some shit, you miss hundred percent of the shots. This is one thing take. I learned about women too. Women will want some shit that they'll never ask for. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Women might uh, a woman will want you to kiss her, but she would never say, "Can you kiss me?" or "Can I kiss you?" That is a very rare woman if she if she has mm -hmm. that type of upfrontness. She'll that's just true. be disappointed in you, and that's it. And, and I you, learned that the tough way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right, bet this what you want. Uh huh. But Sometimes fellas, a no. The guy that acts, the guy that acts more, the guy that shoots more shots, the guy that acts more, the guy that he's gonna have more success. Nah, yeah, you're right. Because he's asking, he's forward. Nah, yeah. And I learned that the tough way. I remember I used to work with this dude. I'm not even gonna say his name, but he was like, "I bet I can book that girl over there." Shout out to my nigga Gerald. That was his name. His name yep. was Gerald. Mm -hmm. This was the smoothest nigga I ever worked with. This was 2015. 15. 2015. Literally, not that long ago. But I'm working at home theater. I'm training this man. He said, God damn. Look at Shorty over by the cameras. And I said, yeah, that joint's all right. And he was like, would you mind? I'm training you on the register. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, would you give me a sec, bro? I said, yeah, I mean. Yeah, do you? I'm thinking this nigga, all right. When you were an annual semester. I'm behind the register. Like a bitch watching this nigga talk to this girl in cameras. Mind you, this like his third or fourth day. 
This man is looking at the camera. She looking at like, yo, so you looking for a camera type shit? He doesn't know shit about the cameras. I'm teaching you how you use the fucking register. Nah, yeah, you fresh. Smooth nigga, though. Mm -hmm. Came back and was like, she said she was going to, I guess, look at him because I don't know how much. He was like, look, I don't know how much the protection. He was asking about protection and stuff. I don't know about that stuff yet. But I got the number, though. That was the first time I seen that man work. Right. I know, about, that, I know about G. Yeah. I just, but you know what I realized? He's just shooting hella shots. Nah, yeah. Or not afraid That's to it. make that move. Yeah, you might be vibing with a joint, but you're like, I ain't gonna say nothing. This man was forward. And guess what? Took some L's. Whole lot more W's. Whole lot more W's. And look, take that shot. No, I would not ask a woman, can I kiss you? That's just not, that thing, I think that should be a forbidden thing to you to ask. You shouldn't ask that. Can I kiss you? It gotta be smooth if you do that. You know? Some of y'all might have already did this. <laughs> it's cool. But like going forward, man. man. If you don't have shit else to say and just say like, you ever, you know how people do <laughs> You know how you be staring at a joint and then you be like, uh, You like making you, me want to yeah. do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mind going crazy places right now. And you know, they going, they going to feed into that shit. What are you thinking about? What are you well, thinking what about? What are you thinking about doing? Look, maybe you should just do yeah. what you're thinking. Because <laughs> girls be wanting you to do this shit. Look, uh -huh. all we saying is, what would you say, biofield? Read the biofield. <laughs> Y'all need to really look up biofield. And if you don't think you really emit a field of energy that people can feel, you really do. It's I like a so. look up biofield. Mm -hmm. If you come in the room negative as fuck, you what I'm going to say? You good? Right. This nigga's negative because you can tell when somebody's negative as fuck. Bet you you see stars. Bet you you see. Remember Beyonce? Remember Beyonce? Like she didn't put the shit out this year. <laughs> 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 Go listen to that energy joint. I don't even think that's energy. Man. What a great ass album. Bet you see stars. What is that joint? I think that's Alien Superstar. We going to fuck up the night. No, that, yeah, that's, that's coffee, that's, right? That's, yeah. No. Yeah, that's coffee. Yeah. The girls, if they listen to this, no, it is not. All right, it is Virgo's group. <laughs> Press the shit. Um, oh, you want to ask the baby shower question? What was the baby shower question? They said you should bring it. Remember we were talking about whether you should bring a gift or oh, not? Oh, yeah. Honestly, bro, I you, thought that that lady was tripping. You cannot come to somebody's baby shower and not bring a gift. Why are you here? For the to, food? To support the fact that your black ass is having a baby. <laughs> Terrence, no. Sorry, if we don't show up, then you're going to be sick. T okay, I would rather you not show up than show up without a gift. I would rather y'all show up and celebrate. Think about it. A baby shower is not an event Terrence, specifically what? made to receive gifts. It is made in celebration that it, you are having a baby. No, it is not. It is a baby shower. It is an event to shower the baby, meaning we are going to shower the baby with gifts. It is not for you to show up and get free meatballs and seafood salad and chicken and just eat and be around your family. This isn't about you. This isn't something you're doing on Sunday because I'm about to go see Sunday at the baby shower. Nah, you need to bring a gift for this couple that is throwing this event because they are trying to shower the baby with gifts. Terrence's black ass is the person that would show up to get meatballs. The modern baby shower originated in the 1950s. Baby boom in the USA. The purpose of the celebration was, and still is, to give the mother-to-be much-needed baby items. The baby shower comes from showering the mother with gifts of gifts and love. All right, bet. Now, Terrence, it's the same thing like when a bride say, don't wear white to my wedding. Yeah. You just respect her wishes and don't do that. Or you just, period, I don't even know what color she wearing. I am just might not wear white. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Now, I totally understand how you would want somebody to bring a gift. But to me, okay, bet we got the same motherfuckers talking about, you know what? Now, if I, this I your fourth or fifth kid, this is my <laughs> thing. Like, hold up. So you saying don't come to the baby shower if you don't have a gift? It does I sound think harsh. It does, that does, all right, that, and that's my only beef. Maybe you should bring a gift to a baby shower. However, it's like, Yo, people who are there for your baby might not have money for it, but they might have, and it's going to sound kind of corny, they might have love, you know what I'm saying? Don't they say it take a village? 
You about to squander your whole village because they might not have, they might not, you're financially ready to have a baby. You know what I'm saying? What if they didn't really have any money to give you a, a gift? You still don't want them to come? All right, bet. Don't come. Well, you know what? There is, this, there, you right about that because not everybody got it, but you could get a $10 gift card for me for Target. You know what I'm saying? And I can use that $10 to get wipes. Or right. I can use that $10 to get fucking something. Your the, black ass is going to eat meatballs and chicken. The only reason why I have such issue with this is because I'm not thinking about just people just coming to your baby shower. I'm thinking about this is your family. This is your aunt T. You know what I'm saying? This is your aunt T. -T. They go, aunt, aunt Cheryl. Aunt T. T. and Aunt Cheryl going to bring a gift. They not the ones that don't. It's these cousins... Your cousin, your third cousin that just, look, he watching the game on his phone but got a plate. Get the fuck out of here. Nah, Terrell, you got this one. You got it. Because people come in, people come to people baby showers. For to, the, to for the event. Yeah. Because we all know that we love them baby shower meatballs in the season. But you know, baby shit. showers have games, you know what I'm saying? Most of the fellas, I'm going to keep it 100. Fellas, we don't be ready to go. We don't be wanting to we go. We don't to even the baby be wanting shower. to show up. That's a fact. If I don't know, bruh, and this is just your friend. Ladies Day. Y'all go have, have a good, a good time. time. <laughs> I don't want to sit around and... No, nah, fat. That's 100%. Shout out my boy Tino. I would never forget I set this man's whole baby shower. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I had to get there and set up the tables, chairs, all of that shit. Nobody was there. <laughs> I'm, I'm with my girl and, a, and I'm the, the, she's a friend. And they said, I'm glad you here. Because we need somebody to set these tables up. Uh -huh. Big round ass tables. I had to take them from the garage around back. Didn't you have on a sweatsuit and you was like Bro, sweating? yeah. It was hot as fuck. I had some shoes. I fucked my shoes up. Oh, I would have been pissed. Now, I, I, I ain't really have no beef with that, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't have no beef. I don't hold on to beef with that. I'm saying. I just thought that was a funny example. I, nah, I get there. Yeah. they like, oh, the, the, the work is here. Here comes a man. Yeah, hold up. Uh-uh, I'm with Shawty right here. I'm, <laughs> look, I'm there for the meatballs. <laughs> exactly. No gift. Nah, we had a gift. Oh, no, y'all had a dope gift, mm -hmm. I think. I remember. But, um, but yeah, man. Random ass, random shit. We got a bunch of random shit this week. I got one more thing that's music related, if you want me to get okay, to that. Okay, yeah. Um, and this is kind of music related, but it's really not. Um, is it more important to be likable or talented? Does your likability outweigh what you actually do? I think in what instances is being talented more important? I think the industry is proof that you have to be more likable than talented. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think these days you definitely have to have a certain likeness over talent. There's way more, more talented rappers that don't have that likability, but their talent is up there. Their talent is definitely better than some of the guys that's really up there. But if you have a certain likability, people gravitate to... Just your vibe and your, your vibe and your swag, I think that's mm -hmm. more important, likability. I have a, a very interesting way of looking at this because I think likability overall is way more important than talent in every field, period. That's not true. Not sports. Not sports, in not sport, writing, not... In sports, you're right. So in sports, you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. When it comes to a lot of fields. sports is one of the things where talent outweighs everything because Kawhi Leonard is the most... Beige personality was the worst year. When they won the finals, that was the worst shit ever to watch. This nigga didn't give a fuck. He was he wasn't likable. <laughs> they asked him who he did it for. He said, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing this for the for the fans. <laughs> We're doing this shit for me. For me. This nigga was the most unlikable champion. But he was dope. He was super talented. So sports, I get it. But a lot of these places that you can work, depending on what field you're going into, likability. Specifically in artistry too, likability is more valuable. I used to have I've had I've interviewed motherfuckers that have had great ass resumes, but you're just annoying and an asshole. And guess what? Since you think you're the shit, I'm not hiring you because we don't need nobody with your fucked up attitude here. Nah, yeah, you're right. And then I've had people that don't have that much work experience, but they just super fucking likable. I can talk to you about anything. I'm a hire dude. Yeah. But in the same time, when it comes to artists, like you said, we see where. This person's cool, so since we like them, I don't give a fuck what they do. Jack Harlow is the prime example of that. Even right, Yeet right now. Even Yeet. Yeah, well, his sound has a likability, but we're not judging it off of talent. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I think the same. But you know what? When people that thrive on likability aren't liked anymore, 
that's when their talent comes into question. That's where they're now they're they're being challenged on that. Yeah. Unless your talent is just completely just untalked to about, talked to about. about. Yeah. R. Kelly is a prime example. Mm-hmm. Super likable, super talented. When he, when we found out he was fucked up, and he was not likable, and he was nowhere not likable at all, that didn't change the fact that, damn, this man motherfucker was talented as fuck, but fuck him. Right. But with somebody like a Jack Harlow, who never really was like a super dope pen, was making catchy shit, when people started getting the ick for him a little bit, now everybody was looking for his album to be trash. Yeah. And when that joint came out, that joint did not deliver well. I don't know why I thought about that, but I was nah, thinking that's like... No, that's a good conversation because we can pivot that into what I wanted to talk about, which is about like all attention being good attention. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, I was talking to Terrell about this. These days, like, the likable versus talent thing kind of, t- t- to me, makes me think about it like, okay, you could put, you're seeing people these days do shit that's funny, or it's funny, and they build a certain likeness because they did something that was funny. But we don't really know if, if that's the moment or mm-hmm. if it's something substantial. I was telling Terrell, a lot of these artists that we see in these days are like tweets. Like, you know how you see a tweet and you say, oh, that's a good tweet. I'm going to retweet that. Like, it's because you just saw that. But, but the thing about it, when you see a tweet and you like it, you don't think about the, the author of the tweet. You don't think about the person's page. You probably don't even go follow it. You just retweet because you agree with this right here. And then you just move the fuck on. You don't say, you know what? I'm about to go follow this person. Mm-hmm. Unless some, they say some yeah. profound shit or like put a thread out and they say, this is what I be doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm not getting more of this, then... Or you got to show me another tweet that you did where I'm like, all right, well, you know what? I like how this motherfucker moves. Right. So I'm but on a one tweet basis, you right. And I think a lot of artists and a lot of things these days reflect like a tweet where something already does some, something funny for the moment, but like, is this good attention or, or, or do you believe in all attention is good attention? Because to me, like, these are the examples that I have for y'all. Genuine, right? Genuine is doing foolish shit on stage. Is it talent? Nah, he's actually That being, little thing when he did his leg and he did it. Same old. Yeah. Is that talent? <laughs> or did we just think, damn, why the fuck did he do that? That was funny as shit. So now it's funny. Now other people are doing it. Now he gets on. He's he, getting put on memes. Now he's getting on stage and just doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then... Even with him raising himself up, it's like <laughs> we're not seeing him stay around, and and he's not on your TL because he blew it up because he's singing. They don't show no videos of Genuine hitting a crazy note. They mm-hmm. don't say, "Damn, Genuine killed this performance." They posting you doing. They're looking for you to do dumb shit. Mm-hmm. And if I'm Genuine, I'm like, "Damn, is that a good thing?" Well, you got to think about it. It's not a bad thing because I'm getting more attention now than I. We are having more conversations about genuine than we ever have. So he could low-key capitalize. But we're not on the clown doing shit. that for what you've been doing for 20 plus years. You've been singing 20 plus years. But I could capitalize on it. Which is what niggas always try to do. And this well, this is my this is my uh my thoughts on that. You're capitalizing off jokes. Like you're capitalizing off people laughing at you, not loving who you are, what you do. You getting up there and you think people are buying your tickets so because they want to hear your voice. Because, you know, you see these. Look, if they interview Genuine right now, I guarantee he'll say, singing is a passion of mine. You know, music and some of music, you know. I always want to do this music. This music it just speaks to me. He's going to talk like that. He's not going to talk nothing about the memes and shit like that. And look, and if they bring the memes up, I guarantee he might think, yeah, you know, you know what it is, what it is. You know, I laugh at it. But he probably going to try like, to shoot that down. That's why I'm saying, do you want... Think about it. People watch this podcast just to say, Terrell going to do some dumb ass. Terrell eyes going to go cross eyed. Got him again. Look at him again. And you can, you can say, oh, I'm getting attention. I'm getting attention. But look, that's what I was talking to you about. People look at attention these days. All attention is good attention. So now people will do anything for looks, even look dumb. Even look crazy. Even look dumb. And then you think that your craft is going to follow this. It's because we've seen the success come from dumb shit. 
There's underlying mm-hmm. talent from dumb shit. Nobody knew that Doja Cat could rap and sing and was as talented as she was because we heard a dope ass album from her. She did a stupid ass song dressed up like a cow that went viral. Yeah. And on the back of that, she capitalized on it mm-hmm. and got somewhere. Bad, the Cash Me Outside chick, Bad Batty or whatever. Yeah. She makes millions of dollars on, on OnlyFans right mm-hmm. now because they was like, look at this little ghetto white chick say, Cash Me Outside. How about that? Mm-hmm. It was, that was a vine, right? Yeah. Wasn't that a song? Catch me outside. How about that? Wasn't that, wasn't the song they made? Swear the remix gone. <laughs> that dude, I think it's him. I don't know who did it, but uh, it was somebody made it. It was end up being a thing. Yep. And so, but you're right. And then look, I, I was talking to Terrell about oh. Antonio Brown. I seen this Back. dude tweet and was like, Antonio Brown really managed to quit football and have a successful rap career. It's mm-hmm. like. Antonio Brown has everybody in the NFL doing his dance. That put that shit on. Put, put that shit on. Go listen to the song though. Yeah. Now we talking about is this talent or likeness? Mm-hmm. Now my thing is like, this is my only question to this shit because I don't have a problem with the Cash Me Outside girl getting money from OnlyFans and being able to feed her family that way. But my thing is like, at what point do you have like a like what point are you proud of what you're doing? Like, we see a lot of celebrities who we love. We mm-hmm. loved what they did, but, like, they're low-key not even happy about it. Like, I don't think Jim Carrey gives a fuck about none of the movies that we actually love. He gives a fuck about some of the deep shit that he thinks. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Look what happened with Robin Williams. He seemed like the happiest fucking person ever. Wasn't happy at all. So it's like, we be thinking that all attention is good attention until you're going home and realizing that, damn, I'm grinding. Think about when Genuine think about putting an album out. If we can't see it, are we going to buy it? And then once reality strikes that people are only here for the goof, because that's what happens. When reality strikes when we realize, mm-hmm. damn, people only fucked with it because of the moment. Or, look, it's like the girl who posts a picture of her ass on Instagram. You run up 30,000 followers off that picture alone. It happens. Trust me. You mm-hmm. can run up 30,000 pictures off a few pics of your ass and your body, right? But then when you go on live, you got 10 motherfuckers in there. That's when the reality strikes. Damn, they only here for this. And if I'm not proud of this, how do I feel? You know what I'm saying? How do I feel about that? Like, am I going to be depressed then? Floyd Mayweather has all of that money. Nobody gives a fuck. We fuck with you for boxing. And now boxing is over. Remember when Mitch said, if I love the game... Well, they still love me. That's a real ass example of not nah, for real. like the world. Like, but you see, people would try to use Floyd as an example, but Floyd seems like he's happy because he loves money and doesn't give a fuck how he gets it. I'm not saying he's not happy, but I know that people don't love Floyd because he has but money. My question more than is, they love him because of what he was doing. That's a fact. But my question is, is that important if I can take care of my family a certain way now? Be- is it important to be proud of what you do anymore? I think it is. I mean, it is. Look at James Harden was at that basketball joint. He was telling me, yeah, bro, you just got to, well, you know, just work hard. I like how I'm seeing people work hard. I'm seeing people work hard. You know, you put yourself in a position where you can get some money and take care of your family. And a lot of people in the comments was like, so that's what's important. James Harden talking about work hard, really? And you had a lot of people responding saying he did what he had to do to grind and take, his, take care of his family. He did what he had to do mm-hmm. to grind and take care of his family. All right, bet, James Harden, when your career is over. Right? Not saying that he's really on that, but let's say he was just trying to do what he could to get the next contract. And you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people feel like James Harden don't be going as hard as they think he could go. I'm not gonna speak on it because mm-hmm. he's in the NBA. I'm not. However, you don't have a LeBron resume. You don't even have a KD resume. You actually have a Charles Barkley type resume. Well, you're really good, but you know they're gonna throw the ring thing at your at your face after your career. Are you gonna have regrets when this shit is over with? You put yourself in a and, and you put your family in a good place. You know what I'm saying? You you change your family's generational change your whole generational wealth, but is that really gonna be enough? To well, I feel like it should be. I feel like it. Well, you right, but you are right about that because at the end of it, you love this is the game you passionate about. Are you truly gonna be happy just because you made millions of dollars? But when you really do look at it, 
the fact that you changed, like, look at Kendrick. Remember his girl at the end of the album was like, you did it. You changed. I started with Good Kid, Mad City. Mm-hmm. And I put out Well, this, uh, others, but yeah. W- w- what I'm saying is like, on a grander scale, I was a good kid in a mad city. Yeah. Even when I, through ADHD, I'm not ADHD. I always call that whole project ADHD because that's the only mm-hmm. song that plays. Mm-hmm. But through Overly Dedicated and Section 80. through Section 80, you were this good kid in a mad city that grew up a crazy life. And you managed to change your whole family shit. And I think even the Kendrick, he don't give a fuck how we feel about the album. Yeah. He already told us, I did it. Yeah. And so I don't give a fuck no more because I, I don't care because I was able to change this. But you're right, though. Like, some things that people do that are dishonorable, they might not be proud of. But you know what? Looping back to what you said about all attention being good attention, you're starting to see businesses do the exact same thing uh-huh. with negative attention. Look at uh, Papa John's. We watching the game the other day um, on Sunday. Yeah. And uh, the commercial for Papa John's came on. We're thinking about better pizza, remember, better ingredients, better pizza, better bitches, better money, my clothes better. My shoes better. I work harder. That yeah. That TikTok. When we saw the Papa John's commercial and they said better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. I, we looked at each other and was like, better bitches, better. And then I got to thinking and I said, do you know how many people bought Papa John's pizzas on the back of that TikTok? Because it's low key like a. Because I even thought if we get pizza, what, when you said you want a pizza, where did I tell you to order? Papa John's. I said, get Papa. This shit. I would never get Papa John's pizza. That pizza First is of, trash. Terrence, no. Papa John's pizza Terrence, is the Burger no. King of pizzas. It I'm is sorry. Not. Papa John's come through in the motherfucking clutch. Y'all got Papa John's, man. I know some people listening. I'm like, what? I just had some Papa John's last night. <laughs> this nigga eat a pizza. <laughs> <Trampin'. What? laughs> but on a serious tip, I started thinking about that dude. His name Tony Stat, whatever, on TikTok. Literally has the game on lock right now. Yes, he does have the TikTok game on lock. But I was thinking, damn, they y'all like owe him some money. Nah, yeah. Because even though that's like a negative thing about Papa John's, like a a negative, not really negative, but like a funny, we mocking you, same way we the same, genuine. Yeah. It's kind of like they, (laughs) now my ingredients, I'm turning the volume up on that better ingredients, better pizza, because I want to remind you. Remember you saw that TikTok? You should come get our pizza. Yeah. 100%. And we got on this podcast and started dogging everybody out, calling people all types of names, dogging women out, dogging out certain people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We would build a small cult-like following, yeah. right? And we would go that up. have the because everybody is fucked up people in the world. More they, fucked up people than anybody. They would start. They would. It'd be a cult. But you yeah. know what? Most of your viewers would be people that don't like you. Uh huh. Because believe it or not. It's fresh and fit is only as big as it is because they have that cult following that's growing, which is the core. Mm-hmm. But then there's people that watch these videos because they hate what they do yeah. or they don't like it. Ben Shapiro. Even, even Kevin Samuels. Even Kevin Samuels. Them women that was calling up there. Even the women that would watch his videos. They like, look at this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Let me see what the fuck he said. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's so weird. It, the world we live in is so weird bro and that's why i was bringing this up because i'm like yo we literally live in a world now where people will do anything for attention even on a more even on a more crazy scale of shit where you're seeing mass think about it mass shooters started getting attention i remember when the the dude shot up virginia tech we was in i was in seventh grade Mm -hmm. when that happened that was crazy i remember i looked at the montage you ever heard the little it's like a uh, it's like an instrumental. Um, yeah, they used that music, and they were showing pictures of this dude going through the hallway. And I remember thinking like how much of a menace he was. Mm-hmm. But another part of me was like, yo, this is like a villain, like a movie villain. Uh huh. And I think us giving all of this attention to mass shooters, this dude went and shot all these people up. And he's a, he's this, he's that. Everybody online talking about it. Some people see that attention and say, okay, the world doesn't fuck with me. The world doesn't like me because of whatever they dealt with. Then they want to go and get that attention. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think if we never put light on mass shooters and didn't, we didn't know about every single mass shooting now. Mm-hmm. It's I, like, what do they call it? Martyr? Being a martyr? Isn't that what being a martyr is? 
Like dying for what you believe in. Marta, I like the way that word is spared. A person yeah. who a person was killed because of their religious rights or beliefs, or kill some kill someone because of to be to be a martyr is to be a person who is killed because of their beliefs. Okay. But to martyr is to kill someone because Based of on. their beliefs. I don't your beliefs or because of their beliefs. Well, yeah, that's why I said okay, that's a little yeah, yeah. different. But you're right. People glorify. People see we glorify killings, and it makes people want to kill. That's right. You know people say, you know, what? I want to go out like that. Yeah. People will know me because I did this for whatever. It's just it's just exhausting. You look at people online when they're coming up. Like, you look at every new artist, right? Especially mm. artists from the street. And it's like, who have you, what have you done? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, these days, you can't even low-key be a street artist without saying, I seen and been through this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and if I'm if I'm young and I'm looking at this field, right, and I want to get into like a, a street rap, right, then I have to come from a street cloth. Mm-hmm. So that can make me do things so that when I get on, I have this to say about it. Like, I seen, what was that dude say? I, 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 he said, it was this dude who was rapping, was dope on Instagram. He said, the first lick, y'all might have seen this. He said, the first lick I ever hit was my father. First, first, first lick I ever hit, was, I was with my father or some shit like. And I said, damn, that's dope. And I'm like, look at me saying that's dope. <laughs> he hit a lick with his father. No, nah, we were just ta- like, yeah, we were just talking about the dirt track, and I was like, this nigga say, yeah, it's crazy. So it's like, all of that goes back to the attention aspect. It ain't about talent. It's about attention. It is. You know what I'm saying? And we know you gonna fuck with it. News stations been doing it for years. Yeah. We know that, all right, bet, this about to go, this about to bang, because these motherfuckers are tripped off, tripped off this shit. It's conditioning, too. And you know what? Why yeah. do you think they don't never let us forget 9-11 every year? Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's a, well, see, didn't it now whoop? You see, that's... It's like, that's do, are a, we giving attention to that? Like, why don't we remember other things every year? Why do we just remember that every year? I never mm-hmm. for, why is there a never forget? Not for sure. It's like being, it's like black, that's why a lot of people don't like Black History Month. Not because we don't want to celebrate black history, but because most of it is about slavery. Most of it is going back to times when people were, when there was inequality, when there was, you know, all types of havoc. Yeah. Like we keep giving attention to like the, the, yeah, it's like a reminder. It's to, let me remind you of what we did to you. And how it wasn't that long ago. And even with 9-11, let me remind y'all what happened once, mm-hmm. once upon a time. Now, we still, we still can't say bomb in the airport. 20 years later, I can't say this pizza is the bomb. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wore a shirt. I, ain't, I think it was the hundreds. I don't know if y'all know the brand the hundreds. Uh-huh. But they had like the bomb logo. I think it's the hundreds. But I had a bomb. It was a mini bomb on my, the front It had the little face on it with the with little the face. Yeah. Uh-huh. And a big ass bomb on the back. I got all the way on my plane. I had it was a long sleeve shirt. I got all the way on my plane, and this dude said, "Dude, I don't know how you made it past TSA with that shirt on." <laughs> and I'm like, "Wow, I totally didn't even realize that I had this on." I remember I was going to Minnesota for that training, but I'm like, "Damn, like the world, we don't forget about. We will not forget about that." And it's like it haven't happened since. Not for sure. Trust me, I am a conspiracy theorist when it comes to certain shit. 9-11 is one of them. Not going to get into it, but you know what? On the heels of us talking about that, the uh, Netflix, I don't know if you got to see the trailer for the Jeffrey Dahmer movie that they're coming out. No, I didn't. You know, if you don't know, De- Jeffrey Dahmer was literally lowering black people up there, l- lowering black people into his apartment, specifically black men, saying that he was going to do sexual things to them, and he was killing them and eating them and feeding them to people. Oh, yeah. Um, but when you look at the trailer, they're like, it's almost like, they, what's the joint that Zac Efron did? I forget. Zac, Zac Efron definitely did. He played, uh, uh, who, did, who did Zac Efron play in that movie? And he was like, this guy. Zac, who did he play? It was um, extremely, extremely sh- weird. Uh, extremely wicked, shockingly or evil. It Ted was about Bundy. Ted Bundy. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. But like, it's almost like we're glorifying this person. It's almost like we're sensationalizing him in a sense. Yeah. The movie is called Dahmer. And he's sitting there and he's like, eat the sandwich. And he's looking out the window. And he's like, and you know, it was a discourse about it in the film community. 
about like if we should continue to make movies about real serial killers. Nah, yeah. Because we making them almost like Jaws. Halloween, yeah, we making it we like... We making it like... Or like a movie about a bear that just went wicked, like Cujo or something like that, where mm-hmm. it's like we're watching from the bear's perspective. Oh, look, look, this, you know what I'm saying? He's smelling. He's sniffing. Oh, look, he's sick. He's sick. Yeah, it's, What it's are weird. we watching? It really is weird. And you know what? There's people's families. That happened in what? I forget what year, Dahmer, that happened, but I'm pretty sure that the grandkids or kids or families or cousins of some of those people was are alive today that have to watch that and we got to watch this motherfucker go out through a day buy shit at the store his span of crime span through 78 to 91 78 to 91 because i remember watching martin's um you so crazy and he was talking about that yeah remember he said i told him come to the apartment i'm gonna give you some head ain't no he meant that shit literally <laughs> <laughs> Not to make Shouldn't a joke. be laughing at it, yeah. <laughs> not to be laughing to make a joke, but um, that's not too long ago. Wow, the casting for this is actually pretty good. That's yeah, a see? spot on casting. Nah, for real, dude looks just like him. And shout out to what's her name? Well, I don't want to make it seem like I'm happy about the movie, but I mean, what's her name? Let's see, Niecy Nash. Niecy Nash is in it. Niecy Nash had a, got a uh, a big role in it. And um, I don't know. Yeah, Niecy Nash. Yeah, I just felt like it's it's just a little weird, y'all. It's weird that we're that we're doing this. Quentin Tarantino made a whole movie about who? Didn't they do some fucked up shit? The man Tarantino. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I just I think it's kind of weird. I do think it's weird because we kind of like sensationalize what they did, and it will do exactly what it does. Like we've been talking about about giving that spotlight to like, and it. Yeah. Oh, wow, he was that sick. All right, I, you know what I'm saying? We could inspire. Are we trying what are we trying to do with it? You know what I'm saying? It goes back to everything we were just saying. And, and it's you know not what? A- go ahead. You went to go see uh Barbarian this weekend. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um you were saying we were saying about movies going towards horror and how horror is starting to become like a Yeah, y'all, believe it or not, horror is low key becoming the new cinema. There's a movie out called Pearl where I, they said the the girl that plays the lead role, just kills it. And even Martin Scorsese came out recently and talked about how he loved the movie and how the director's style was this and that. I went and saw Barbarian. Honestly, I did not think it was what y'all say it is. You know what I'm saying? What a lot Mm -hmm. of people say it is. I did not think it deserved this 92% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But just to stay on, on par with the subject, horror is becoming the box office genre machine. Yeah. It's the, it's the movie that's going to make you money. People don't want to go to the theater and see the love story when I can sit online at home and stream it on my couch with my own food, with my loved ones. Yeah. I can watch on my own time. I don't got to be embarrassed how I feel about it. People don't want to see... The small dramas. Yeah. Like, I really wonder how Breaking with John Boyega, Nicole uh-huh. Bahari, I wonder how that would do in a theater. Are people going to get up and go out and see that? I wanted to. It's not in theaters? I don't know if it's in theaters It was yet. in Select. It, it was in Select. I remember. Break. Go keep but, going, though. Uh, people would rather go to the theater and have a good time. Halloween mm-hmm. Kills was one of the biggest box office successes of last year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Huge. Because people was getting up, going out, and seeing it because, fuck it, it's Halloween. Day it's night. scary. Yep. Scream did well. Scream you know did well. They making another one. They making it, and they're going to keep making them. Uh, also, think about the one, of the one of the biggest movies this year was what? Nope. Jordan Peele. People were saying, I just had a great time in the movie theater. And I was telling Terrell, back in the day, it didn't used to be about having a great time in the movie theaters. I was telling them, we used to watch... Fast and the Furious, Jurassic Park, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. These movies that are fun to watch in a theater, we watch them get trashed on mm-hmm. by the critics. You read Siskel and Ebert, and they wasn't fucking with it. They because... was not fucking with it. And it's like, they would say this, oh, the story lacked this, it lacked this, it didn't this. When you watch Barbarian, that movie was fun to watch, yeah. but you had to know the critics would eat that up. But look, you're seeing so many critics saying, I just had a great time in the theater. 
Mm-hmm. I told Terrell, we're so starved for originality and fun in the theater. We're so burnt out with, think about it, we watching many three-minute movie, I mean, many 15-second movies on our phones every day. It yep. is hard to entertain people these days. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? So, like, we're at a place now where if I'm not scared as fuck or it's not this big crazy action, like, I really want to know what this Black Adam is about to do because The Rock has been on a tear with the promo. Yeah, I don't know much about DC like that outside of Batman, Superman, yeah. and Justice League sitting outside my gym. And I'm just thinking about Black Adam. It's like drinking a, what is that? that drinking that, a dr- Tau Energy drink. Tau Energy drink. T- with a little Tiramana shot. Getting ready to go in the Iron Paradise. <laughs> the love for Black Adam. I hope this shit is good, Rock. <laughs> but you know what? He's a box office machine, too. He's a box office machine. And you know what? You're right about that because the target group, the audience of the post-COVID audience for in theater box office success is 18 to 35 the people that are in that millennial gen z range are the only ones that are actively going to the theater my parents i think my dad went to the movies recently because he went to go see note Mm -hmm. uh but outside of that they don't really go to the movies like they used to my parents used to always go to the movies but post covid older folks are thinking about their health and they got used to not going to the theater. 100. It became, think about it. That's the danger of taking off. Yeah. Some certain podcasts I listen to, if they take a week off, you start realizing, damn, you know what? I made it through this whole week without the motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And that's why people got to stay relevant. But the kids are going to the theater. And the young adults or younger adults. Yeah. They be going on date nights, taking people on dates. So, look, we don't want to go and see this. We want to go see Halloween Kills. Fuck it. We went to go see Scream, and I knew it was going to be trash, but it was on some date night. It was cold type shit. We did the same thing with Halloween Kills, and we want to see the new Halloween joint because that joint was just funny as shit. It was dumb as shit, but we had a mm-hmm. good time watching it. I can't help but think back <sighs> about other movies like what it would have been like to sit in the theater and watch Glorious Bastards. Yes. And watch them at the end say, what did he say? I think this might be my masterpiece. And it goes off. Dun, 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 dun. You got to get up and leave. Yeah. That shit is amazing. Remember we did the, uh, I felt like we really experienced the tail end of it with the Hateful Eight. Going to the, H- the AFI theater, Washington 70, the intermission. Like we got to experience some of the last, and that vlog is on YouTube if you want to watch it. Well, I wanted the first. That's yeah. literally our second or third vlog. Second or third vlog. We yeah. went and saw that, that movie. But that was 15. Eight. Mm-hmm. Before any pandemic, four years later, yep. back when the theater and was film the theater. was dying. The, was, I'm yeah. letting you know right now, the rise of, of TikToks and, and Vine and Snapchat and social media and all of this shit. Where we're cre- you have so many creators who can do it without a big studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can tell you a story in three in 15 seconds now. We're burnt out on it now because yep. we've been seeing it for a long time. I was talking. It ain't fresh no more. It yeah. ain't like, ah, that's funny, but I'm going to watch this movie. It's crazy. That shit is encapsulating people. It is. People aren't sitting at home on Netflix like they are TikTok. So much to the point where Netflix looks at TikTok as their biggest competitor. Yes, 100%. You know how I knew, and I was talking to my boy Don Cell about this generation type. I just did New York Fashion Week. Shout out to him. But I was talking to him about TikTok. Be. And you know what's crazy about when I knew this shit was different? I'm on TikTok, and I told him, we both agree, and you probably have seen the same thing. You're on TikTok, and this chick comes up and says, you've watched enough. Maybe it's time to put your phone down, take a breather, and just get some time because you've been on here for a while. Time to maybe go to sleep or whatever. And I'm like, this is somebody telling me to get off of the app. Is it an actual app thing? No, Terrence. It's like... You're scrolling. T- you never had one of them? Is it like an ad? It's like a sponsor post, but it's not. It's literally a message, like a TikTok. And as opposed to somebody doing some creative shit, they're saying, you've been on here for a while. Damn, see, I haven't it's, been on TikTok that long. You're not a real tiktok I'm like not. Me. I'm not. When you on that motherfucker too long and they telling me to get off, oh, nah, I know it's serious. That mean I done gave these motherfuckers enough time. They done 
Monsters Inc. Scream filled me filled me up with the little yellow bottle. And now they ready. And to, now they about to send my they're door. They trying to send your door back. And if I don't want to get off, I can scroll past it and give them another two hours. That bro. shit's serious, bro. Nah, it is. And low key, I will uh, shout out my boy John Denton because I saw John Denton's video last night about the monetization thing. Oh yeah, and he said he had uh he said YouTube Shorts averages thirty billion views a day. Damn. YouTube Shorts, their their version of Reels, averages thirty billion views a day. Do you know that number is ridiculous? And that's exactly why they're trying to have people who create uh content for shorts that's why they're letting people monetize the same way tiktok is that's why i said youtube is 100 percent competing with tiktok all right let's talk about that because i don't know anything about this youtube monetization thing like what is that all about yeah. so youtube will now let creators uh content creators monetize videos with licensed music um and it really is for and i should have did my research like my boy jd did shout out john den shout out to him the uh, prophet Mm hmm. But apparently it's going to be mainly like for shorts. You know what I'm saying? Because people mm -hmm. use music and shorts. People can create content. And really it's 45%. Normally you don't get anything. People don't know this. If you put music in a video on YouTube and it gets copywritten, you're not going to get any money. None. Mm -hmm. It's going straight to UMG and YouTube. It's going straight to UMG or the label and YouTube. This is why me and Terrell did what we did and why people say y'all could have been way more rich if you would have just posted reactions. Y'all have no idea that we're not getting a single dollar for, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just to put in a little bit more context, me and Terrell average, we and Terrell got like 5 million views in a month before, right? Me and Terrell didn't get any money that month, none. Then YouTube puts out an article talking about how they ran up some billions of dollars mm -hmm. they on AdSense revenue. Yep. And I know when I click my video and the ad is playing before my video, I know that money not going to me. So that's just some insight as to why me and Trey did what we did. However, it says, I'm going to read this to y'all. Besides the 45% cut YouTube takes or share, uh, I'm sorry. So you the motherfucker that would go up front and they'd be like, nah, they wrote this Everybody weird. shut up and let them read. You got it. Let them read. That what used to be funny <laughs> as shit when somebody couldn't read. Oh my God, that was funny as shit. I would feel bad for him. I, I got a big heart. I can admit when I was younger, I didn't feel bad and we just thought it was funny. For the left of the... Because normally that was the person that could have jokes too. Oh yeah, no bullshit. But anyway, yeah, that's going to sound funny, whatever. <laughs> uh, it says, besides the 45% cut YouTube takes or share revenue with the license holders. You see how they just put or... Mm -hmm. If creators opt to share revenue with artists, their 55% share will be prorated based on the number of licensed tracks in their video. YouTube spokesmer spokesperson Suzanne Kadrecha says, if they use one track, they'll keep 27.5%. If they use two, they'll get 18.3%. Videos are subject to other deductions like performance rights fee and remaining portion goes, and the remaining portion goes to the rights holders. Hmm. So Basically, John was talking about how there's now a situation where you can buy a license, you know what I'm saying, to which you can share with the uh, like the actual creators of the music mm -hmm. and the labels. And before, you used to be able to do that through like third-party companies. You know about that. BMI, ASCAP, you can get a yeah, you can get a little license so that you can put certain things and yeah. not get yep and not get it taken down. You still got to share the revenue with right. whoever you bought the license through, but now. There are situations where you're getting that straight through YouTube. So they're going to cut out all those third-party guys and, and allow that there. Okay. But even more so for on our sense, they're really going to say, if you use one song, one track, your 55 goes to 27%. Yeah. And if you use two tracks, your 27% goes to 18%. So what if I do, dirty, what if, what so what if I I do a Donda, 30 tracks? You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Y'all should see our email when we post certain videos. Mm hmm. Boom, 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 boom. All of copyright, the copyright. Copyright, copyright, copyright. They're not going to say, hey, you have music from Kanye West Donda in here. Nah. They're going to say, um, off the, you're going to get the off the grid joint. Uh, Junior, you're going to get all of the tracks mm -hmm. separate. And those are all separate claims. And that's why the end of it, where it says, like, something about performance rights. Uh, what does it say? Videos are subject to other deductions like performance rights fee and the remaining portion goes to the rights holders. 
that performance rights fee. If I'm UMG, I don't like this. Me neither. I'm going to find a way to, to, and that's what they do. That's what they'll do. They're going to find a way to still get you. Because this is the thing. YouTube is smart because they want to be able to compete with TikTok. Uh -huh. And too many times do you put things on YouTube, the shit gets just taken down. So I think the best thing for the content creators like me and Terrell who, who put YouTube, music on YouTube is the fact that we'll be able to go up and not have to worry about videos like the Beyonce. We cannot keep the Beyonce on YouTube for, to save our lives. Yeah. That video continuously shit, gets... I'm not worried about this. Mm -hmm. That video continuously gets blocked. And like... I think the bad thing about it is like, I mean, I think the good thing about it is like, we'll be able to post videos and not have to worry about them getting taken down. But like you, like you see, the percentages is going to go down yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I also think this is a good thing. Like we're going to start to see a lot more creative content, I believe. Like how dope would it be? Y'all know, y'all have no idea. We even did it in the last vlog, but I'll be wanting to put music in vlogs. And I feel yeah. like if I'm able to, just get that. I don't give a fuck if I'm not getting no money from it. You know what I'm saying? If I'm just if I'm able to put it in there and it, it, it can stay up, yeah, and I get a little percentage. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, bet. Because I be wanting to put like y'all heard the music in the beginning of this. Can y'all y'all know what I could do with that? If you, you know could, what type of vlogs we could come with if I can use licensed music the same way I can go and put up an Instagram story or something like that and be able to select music. Yep, I think that'd be dope. John Denton was talking about how. They, he wonders how fast this licensing thing is going to work because, you know, you got YouTubers who want to put up videos and stuff like that right when the music drops. Exactly. That's, the, that's the performance rights thing that I feel like. That's that loophole right there because that was, that's what I was just getting ready to say. What happens when the album comes out at midnight yeah. and reviews go up the next day or the next day? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is it going to be as fast as how when somebody put out an album, I can get right on Instagram, go to music, choose that track for a post in the story or you know what I'm saying like how fast is that gonna work yeah because I don't imagine and I in in our experience with YouTube they have not kept up believe it or not they're just the biggest they're just the biggest I have a bigger so I have a bigger user base than all of y'all there are people that live their lives around my platform period yeah babies Coco Melon them fucking Coco Melon videos yeah. Like, there's people that don't watch TV. They don't have anything. They just do YouTube. I am somebody that uses YouTube every single day, every day, all day. I'm on YouTube at some point. 100%. But they haven't really been, they haven't really kept up with, like, the short. Like, I hate shorts. I don't know about anybody else. I scroll right past them shits. Shorts is just like Facebook reels, though. You ever look at the Facebook reels? Yeah, but that joint is. But shorts can be like that. I need to it's use it on YouTube my phone. YouTube comment. It's YouTube Content just in short form. It's still from a lot of YouTubers though. Like it's YouTube. It's not like TikTok. Yeah. Well, I use. I've only seen shorts. I only use the shorts or have come in contact with shorts on like the YouTube TV app. Yeah. And that shit is just the layout is not like how I guess you can scroll on your phone. So, but shout out to YouTube for at least trying. We gonna see if this shit work. Nah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I'm not mad at the progress. This could be up for us. Do you have a movie suggestion of the week? Damn, what was my movie suggestion of the week? I never wrote it down. I didn't know what it was going to be. You want me to go first? Nah, yeah, you go first. All right, bet. Movie suggestion of the week for me, um, I've been watching the Jalen Ramsey post-game podcast uh, with his agent, the agent, David uh, Muligeta, who literally represents... Did I have that up here? Wow, the Jeffrey Dahmer joint dropped on Netflix today. Today, crazy, mm -hmm. right? Um, but David Muligata represents Buda Baker, Quandre Diggs, um, hella people, Micah Parsons. Yeah, love him. Follow him on Instagram. Um, Jalen Ramsey, he's like he had the second biggest NFL contract to Todd France from la from last year in terms of like the Forbes joint, whatever. Um, but with that said, my movie suggestion of the week is just got put back on HBO Max. Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise. Um, the movie is called Jerry Maguire, starring okay. Tom Cruise. Cuba Gooden Jr. won the Oscar for his supporting role. And it is literally a movie about this uh, agent who gets fired from his own agency. and He gets fired from the agency by the guy he trained. And then he goes to start his own agency and he has clients 
One of his clients' name is Rod Tidwell, played by Cuba Gooding. And that joint just shows you a different... It's like kind of like a love story because you kind of like... The main character is Tom Cruise, the agent. Yep. And like he has like this love thing. Like he's got a fiance, but he meets this regular chick who's not really into the whole thing and he kind of falls for her. But you get to see the, the little small nuances that you don't think about. Regina King plays Cuba Gooden's wife. Yeah. And her role in the movie is like a... You need to take care of my husband so that we can be good, Jerry. You know what I'm saying? Like... You get to see the sports player's wife's perspective to the agent and the Antonio Brown receiver that has caused all types of controversy. And he's on a contract where if you get hurt, you're not getting this 10 mil. So I need you to fucking chill, Rod. Yeah. And he's like, fuck you, Jerry. I know what I'm doing type shit. Great ass movie. Classic Tom Cruise box office legend. Just killed it with nobody knew that. Top Gun was going to fucking smash all them records. But Tom Cruise is still him. And so, that's my movie suggestion of the week, Jerry Maguire. My movie HBO Max. Not yet. My movie suggestion of the week is on Netflix. This isn't going to be something that I think is groundbreaking or like the, the movie that's going to shock you. But I think it is a good watch. I'm going to go with Steve Jobs. I don't know if y'all oh, ever real? seen the Ashton Kutcher one or the Nah, this is the Christian Bale joint. Okay. Not Christian Bale. Yeah. Christian Bale. No, Terrence. Now, what's the dude's name that was in uh American Beauty? Christian Bale. Terrence is not Christian Bale. It's what? um Michael, Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. <laughs> All right, man. Was Michael Fassbender in American Beauty? Michael Fassbender was in um, Christian Bale and Michael Fassbender look alike. I know that might sound fucked up, but think about it. They do. This don't look like. I mean, yeah. Who? No, Christian Bale was in what's the David O. Russell movie he did? The Fighter. Go with and American Bale. Hustle. And American Hustle. Okay. Oh, and, yeah. and he was Batman. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Michael Fassbender, Steve Jobs. I know that uh, Seth Rogen's in it. But that movie, to me. We use an Apple products every single day. I think Steve Jobs was definitely one of the most brilliant minds in like to ever exist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For what we're doing now, and like you get to see how like tedious he was and how like he really didn't play about this shit. I think that's a good movie to watch just to give you like that insight into like the start of all of this shit that you're literally using right now. I think most people have a iPhone or you doing something that has to do with Steve Jobs, and it kind of gives you an idea of his start. You know what I'm saying? I think movies like that are cool because when you look at what that man was doing or go and look up what somebody like Elon Musk was doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But Bezos. that movie, you know what I'm saying? When you look at what they were doing at our age, you uh -huh. think you're behind now? Is it, is it as good? I haven't seen Steve Jobs. I'm going to watch it. Bro, I didn't know it was on Netflix. That movie, is. It, I, was, I had a question. Is it... The, am I going to feel the same way I felt when I watched The Social Network? Yes. I think The Social Network was written by Aaron Sorkin, so Steve Jobs was written by Aaron Sorkin, wasn't it? Am I tripping? Aaron Sorkin wrote the screenplay. <laughs> yes, you will then. If you saw Social Network, oh, yes. So, yes. This, that's why that movie was so good. Aaron Sorkin, one of the best film pens of all time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I would say one of the most unique. Yeah. You'll know it's his writing. For sure mm -hmm. you will. Bro, you will. And let me tell you, that movie is great because this is Aaron Sorkin back in his bag showing somebody else at the start of their journey. Yeah. And like I said, I like watching that because I be thinking, damn, you know what I'm saying? You think you're going hard now? Or you think you're not doing enough now? You watch a movie like that and be like, this motherfucker was young mm -hmm. and dealing with this shit. So, that's a good one. Another one is, I, another movie suggested that I want to watch too is the Little Baby documentary. I think this one, either Hulu or Amazon. Yeah. Or Amazon. I actually want to watch that joint. I haven't, I don't, I haven't, I've, I've only seen like the trailer for it, but like, I saw like a, 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 a thing where Little Baby was talking about jail. He was talking about, yeah, make or break you. I want to see that joint. There is a movie, and you know what? Just to, if I can give an extra, an extra one. Yeah. There's a movie that I have not seen yet. It's an Indian film called RRR, the letter R, the letter R, the letter R. It's on Netflix, and they said that joint is fire. I do want to see that. I think I might watch that joint. I, about to say, I want to watch that joint, too. 
Because the director said he never thought that his film would do well in, you know, the United States. But it's doing good. So I do want to see that joint. E May Udoka. Man. Bro, he. I guess we can just touch on that real quick. E May Udoka, the coach of the Boston Celtics, who dates the Nia Long. The Nia Long. Debbie from down the street. Is under a fucking investigation or could lose his job for having a consensual sexual relationship with a staff member, aka we all just seen Nia in the neon green in the playoffs on the sideline. So what the fuck are they talking about, E May? Right. But Twitter motherfuckers are detectives. Have you seen all of the pictures and videos of them together? Who? Him and what's shorty name? Allison. Terrell, Feaster. you're not about to put her out there. Terrence, you're not about I'm to do sorry. That. You're not about to do that. They literally don't know put her. pictures of all of the staff, of all of the women on the Boston Celtics staff. So y'all just picked the most attractive one and just say that he was talking to her. That's Tans, like not cool, bro. Tans, but one, the other person, the other two people. Okay, but you judging off of like physical appearance. I'm you don't sorry, know who Sorry, I'm is. sorry. Can we just be keeping a haunted? No. We know you, it's her. You ru- no, you, bro- you pulling her name through the mud simply because of how she looks. That's not cool. I don't think we pulling her name through the mud. You are. You're trying to insinuate that she's sleeping with a married man. He's married with a kid to Nia. No, nah, they're not married. They're engaged. But They do have a kid, though. Yeah, but you're insinuating that she's a home wrecker because she's pretty. And, oh, if he ain't been with Nia, then it got to be her. Nah, see, that's not cool. I'm not doing that. That's somebody family member, too. That's somebody family member, too. All right, babe, your girl. You're right. You're right. Your girl works at somewhere. And they say, oh, yeah, it was her. Because look at her. Yeah, he hitting that. Yeah, he hitting that. You would not fuck with that. You're right. You're right. Tans is right, but you're annoyingly right. Son, let's give it a you, not, you can't do that. All right, Ben. Let's, you're let's, right. Let's, all right, let's go. No, ahead. no, you're right. You're right. You're right. But, fellas, um, you're trying to shed light on some bullshit. e what are you doing? And we're not going to sit here and act like just because Nia was bad that she's perfect. Y'all know how it is. There's going to be people who say, well, you know, looks ain't everything. It ain't about how they look. Trust me, I know that. It ain't about how shorty look. It's if you happy with her. So we but, don't know what's going on. But you should still leave and not cheat. Right. They have been together since 2015, too. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. 2010. Yeah. I didn't know they've been together for that long. Robert Griffin III, x rays can definitely uh, just said some true shit. He said, if you're more upset about Ime Udoka and the Celtic situation than Brett Favre stealing millions of welfare money from the poorest people in our country in Mississippi then you're a part of the problem. I agree. I hate this nigga RG3, but he's right. There are so many other situations that aren't getting... this. I saw a tweet yesterday that said they gave Jameis Winston stealing chicken strips or whatever. Crab legs. Crab legs. More press than than they're giving the Brett Favre welfare money situation. That has been completely swept under the rug. I'm glad we talked about it last week. No, it is. But like... Because it's fucked up. And the fact that nobody's talking about it a seventy million dollar, a seventy million dollar um, scandal with seventy million dollars in welfare money missing from the poorest people in the nation, and Brett Favre is tied up in text messages. Well, they have proof that you're trying to get at least five million, and we have proof in the volleyball stadium being already built, and we have proof that your daughter went to the school and played volleyball, and we have text from you and the governor at the time. Right, but nobody. Not first take, not undisputed, not first things first. None of the sports shows are talking about it. Nobody said anything. Are motherfuckers scared because you got governors and shit involved? I don't know. I think it's fucked up. But with that said, here we go. NFL picks. We back on another Friday getting you prepared for Sunday. We got to show some love to some of the teams from last week first, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about how y'all took an L. Fuck it. Let's My commanders there. took an L to the Lions, so I give a shout out to, to Detroit, uh, One Pride or whatever y'all say. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Good game. We almost came back, but y'all often slice and dice through our horrible defense. Uh, shout out Amin Ross St. Brown. I like the fact that Amin Ross St. Brown called out De'Ami Brown, called out the commanders and said, yo... I'm not, uh, I didn't see De'Ami Brown on the field. Mm-hmm. They picked him over me. People are saying, go at the organization, not the player. Y'all need to understand that me going at the player is going at the organization. Right. I didn't say De'Ami Brown's trash. He's not a me. That's going at the player. Him saying, well, I didn't see him on the field much, and y'all picked him over me, so. 
Right. That's me going at the organization. Y'all need to just understand that we look stupid as shit. People are like, well, look who De- Deami has to compete against. Curtis Samuel, Dodson, so-and-so. What, did we have Curtis Samuel when we got Deami Brown? No. Did we have Dotson when we first got Deami Brown? No. And are any of them better than Amon Ra? Hell no. Is Dotson better than Amon Ra St. Brown? I don't know, y'all. Terrence, absolutely not. <laughs> is Curtis Samuel better than Amon Ra St. Brown? No. This man is low-key. That's what I'm saying. So, like, let's not try to make excuses. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Ross A. Brown putting that work in, and he's and to me, I think he had a Kobe mentality. If y'all had him you on the- You drafted him over me, I'm busting your ass just to show that you shouldn't have. If he y'all said, had him on team. the other side of Terry, y'all would have one of the best receiving cores in the league. Like, undoubtedly. Recency bias? No, that motherfucker went off. He went off last year. His first year was last year. The Yami Brown in his second year. Nah, his third year is this year. Nah, De'Ami Brown's first year was last yeah, year. Yeah, right. this is Amon Ross' second year. He blew up the last six games of last year. Right. And then this year, De'Ami had an opportunity to be big. He had an opportunity to be right in Amon Ross St. Brown's seat. So, that's just all I wanted to say. Yeah. But, only thing I, to who? I'm, only, person, only people that I got to give flowers to, um, Dolphins. Shout out to the Dolphins. They, that game was insane. Um, I got to give it up to the, uh, the Bucks. Because they ended up beating the Saints. Um, the motherfucking Giants are undefeated. Shout out to the Giants fans. Yep. I know what it's like to be undefeated for a little while, and it feels good until you lose. Yep. We look terrible. My Broncos look terrible. I'm going to give my take on that. Yep. I give a shout out to the Jaguars who beat the Colts. Didn't think that they was going to beat them. Yes. Uh, give a shout out to the Cowboys who beat the Bengals. Didn't think the Cowboys was going to do that, yep. but they proved that. Maybe they had something with Cooper Rush. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Cardinals for whooping the Raiders' yeah. ass. Mm-hmm. Turn and, uh, that's pretty much it. And the, and the Eagles are showing that, yeah. And Chiefs are the best team in the AFC West. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, we got, I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right, week three picks. Yeah. Starting tonight. <laughs> yeah. Starting tonight, we got Steelers at the Browns. And my pick for that was the Steelers. Um, but I think I might switch over to the Browns. I'm about to say, my pick, believe it or not, is the Browns. I mm-hmm. think the Browns, I think Nick Chubb has been having a good good season yes. so far. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with the Browns. I like the Steelers. I think the Steelers have been on a high, but it's in Cleveland. I'm going with the home team Browns. I think Steelers probably might go out there. I'm going to pick know? the Browns, too, because no J.J. Watt. You know, TJ, uh, they, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. No TJ Watt. The the running def, the run defense isn't what it used to be, and I think that Chubb and them can have a good game, but it all depends, man. Cause that Steelers, Steelers just organization will show up. Mike Tomlin will find a way. Okay. But I'm gonna pick the Browns. Um, Saints are going to North Carolina to um play the division rival, the Panthers. Yep. And I'm picking the Saints. I'm picking the Saints, too. Christian McCaffrey, they said he was feeling stiffness or something like that. He's limited. I don't know. I think I like what the Saints have. I like what the Saints have. Saints didn't look that great against Brady, though. They did. They got picked apart. You know what? But I'm still picking the Saints. I I'm like going to switch my pick. I don't trust Baker. I'm, I'm switching my pick, and I'm picking the, the Panthers. I think the Panthers are hungry. Panthers don't have a win yet this season. They don't. And I want Baker to do well. I've always I want him to do well because everybody just shitted on him. I feel like he just got completely shitted on. He wasn't that great. But I'm, I'm going picking the Saints. With the Panthers. All right. Texans. All right, we got Texans mm-hmm. at the Bears. I'm Man. going with Justin Fields and Justin Fields and the Bears. I'm gonna go with Justin Fields and the Bears too. I think the score doesn't really show how good they played against the Packers. I don't think they played that well. But I feel like they didn't play like horribly. You know what I mean? Like that Texans defense. D. I'm yeah, only saying that because defense. we barely beat that. Right. I'm just gonna go with the Bears. It's gonna be in Chicago. I don't know. I'll, I tend to be. Lean, I tend to lean towards the home field team. They they already got a win at home. So and they're they gonna beat anybody again. this year. It's gonna be them. It's gonna might rain again. It might rain again. See? Soldier Field is tough, and it's a tough place to play. So I'm gonna go with the Bears too. Yeah, I mean these are 1 p.m. games, y'all. We got the Chiefs. At the Indianapolis Colts. 
I have no doubt in my mind that the Chiefs will go in and win. I think the Colts are overrated. Y'all tried to get rid of Wentz and blame all y'all problems on Wentz. And now Matt Ryan looks exactly like how we thought Matt Ryan looked. Average. I don't know why there was so much hype around Matt Ryan. Like, oh, we finally got our guy. I remember when the Colts fans, what's his name, Pat McAfee? Uh, we finally got our guy. Well, guess what? Y'all lost two games that low-key y'all should have won based on the y'all all season hype. You think y'all about to go and get y'all first win against Kansas City? Yeah. Nah. I'm going to pick the – I hate the motherfucking Chiefs, but I'm picking the Chiefs to win because I do not see the Colts beating them. If Michael Pittman Jr. is still injured, that's going to be even more of a loss. I think Matt Stafford is a statue, and he cannot – he's not mobile. And you mean he, Matt Ryan? Yeah, my bad. I think Matt Ryan is a statue. He's not mobile. And these days, if you're not Brady or if you're not Rodgers or if you don't got, like, this cannon arm, you have to have some mobility to win in this league. I feel the same way about my, my quarterback, Wentz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to get the fuck away from that first guy yep. so you can create a play. Yeah. If the first guy beats your lineman and you're going down, it's going to be a long game for y'all. Look at what Kyler Murray was doing. They're not coming back. From the Raiders, if he is not creating plays. Did you see how no, yeah. that two-point conversion to A.J. Brown, <laughs> that was it, that was ridiculous. A.J. Green. Sorry, A.J. Green. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking up my words. But you know what I mean, though. Nah, for sure. The, when he, him running around and then running it in. Bro. Insane. I am praying. The last one we had was RG3. That's like having a broke down, beat up, fast ass car. You know what I'm saying? I hate RG3. I just hate him. I just don't like you. Ever just not like somebody? You don't like him. I don't know why. I don't like you because you wasn't as good for the shit you be talking. Yeah, he needs to play. He needs to make sure he's doing. He needs to make sure. How about you just shut up? You was trash. Bills at Dolphins. Bills. Dolphins. This is gonna be. Y'all was getting y'all ass whooped and y'all came back. <laughs> but I don't think you're doing that against the Bills. I don't think you're doing that against the Bills either. I'm sorry. The Bills' defense is not if gonna the have Dolphins the breakdowns win that they did. This game, you gotta put big respect on the Dolphins' name. That's man. a fact. You have to put big respect on two in the Dolphins if they win this game. I think the Bills could go out here and lose this game because in Bills fashion, I don't think they can keep the perfection. I think they're going to drop a few games that's like, dang, how y'all out there losing? And I think the Dolphins can steal this game, but I'm picking the Bills. I need Stephon Diggs to have another 40-pointer if I'm going to win in this fantasy. We'll see. We got Lions. At Vikings. Turn up, Vikings. Lions. Uh, I'm going to go with the Vikings. I think the Vikings are going to be at home. Uh, Skull. The Vikings, y'all just got humbled. Humbled. They did. By Philly. Shout they out just Philly. did nothing. I picked Philly last week because I knew. And you mean to tell me Monday night in Philly? Nah. Yeah. Not with this Philly team. Uh-huh. That was bad. Y'all you know about to see. Mm -hmm. At home. <laughs> I mean, look, it's I'm, not Monday night. And, you know, Kirk Cousins don't have a good record Monday night. Yeah. He's, he's bad in prime time. But I am picking the Lions. Dan Campbell. I need Jettas to go off, but I think the Lions will win that game. I think the Lions can sneak up. And I think this is Kirk a good a long this day. This is that earn your respect game for the Lions. If they win this, they're going to earn some respect. Mm -hmm. Because beating us isn't really earning you respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they get a little bit more credit from this. No, nah, so yeah. they got true, like, Vikings Hype. are, yeah. If you can do what the Eagles did, facts. Ravens at Patriots. I'm going to go. I think I picked the Ravens to win this. I was so undecided on this, I didn't even pick. So I'm just going to have to pick on the spot. Ravens at Patriots in New England. I think I'm going to go with New England. I need to watch their highlights. I did not watch the Patriots uh, highlights. I don't know what it was about that meltdown. No, you, know, you know what? I'm going Baltimore. I'm going Baltimore. I'm I going like that. I, Lamar Jackson's performance is getting outshadowed by the Dolphins' comeback, but he went crazy. He went crazy. I'm going Lamar. I'm going Lamar at New England. It's about time that Belichick has had a fuckboy losing season. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I think New England has been, I think, in two close games, though. I don't think they've been getting smoked. They just have lost. Yeah, so but they really won one. Know. Didn't they beat the uh, Steelers? They did beat the Steelers. Damn, so you know what? No, nah, I'm still going Baltimore. I'm still going Baltimore. My bad, New England. I thought that y'all lost both of them games. But both of them games was close, though. Mm -hmm. Bengals at Jets. I'm picking the Jets. I feel like there's something seriously wrong in Cincy. And what great would it be 
for Joe Flacco and them to go out there and beat the Bengals because something is wrong. And this is my thing about Joe Burrow. When you was winning, you was on IG with the fur coat and the buffs and the ice, and you was Joe Burrow. Now y'all lose two games, you delete your Twitter and your Instagram. Pussy. I don't like that. You pussy for that. Why? Why? Because, oh, where's the fur coat at? You not Joe Burrow no more. You was all soaking that shit up. Nah, yeah. Because I ain't like how he went up there and accepted the award for comeback player of the year. I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. We're getting ready to go to the Super Bowl or whatever. Thanks. All right, bet. Because now y'all are struggling. And you instant, you delete your Instagram? Pussy. I am going to go with the Bengals. I don't think the Bengals going to go out there and lose to the Jets. Yeah, I think they, the Bengals probably. go out here and get their first dub, and they're going to get their shit together. They had to play against two tough-ass defense to start the, start the season. Who they play first? Who they what do you mean they first? had to? They played the Steelers first, the Mitch Trubisky Steelers. They should have been a win. They played the TJ Watt Steelers all the way to the end. <laughs> they should have won that game. Uh, they played against TJ Watt. They then, now, then they went against that Cowboys defense. Cooper Rush. Y'all went up against the Cooper Rush Cowboys and the Mitch Trubisky Steelers. Y'all should be 2 0. At least all of the media and everybody had them 2 0. All I'm going to say is they went up against two defenses that have a little bit more respect than the Jets. I think they can turn it around this, year, this week by beating the Jets. I just can't see myself. I, don't, I think if they're going to get on their horse, it got to be this week. It got to be this week. I'm still picking the Jets. Bengals, let's get it. Titans and Raiders. The Raiders are coming to Tennessee to play the Titans. And I am picking Tennessee. No, I'm picking the Raiders. This that game where the Tennessee Titans Raiders. come back and get it. I think this is the game that Tennessee goes out. I can just see that gray out there and that blue. I just beat somebody's ass in Madden with Tennessee. Tennessee is a tough-ass team. Tennessee. They don't have that many receivers, though. But Derrick Henry ain't been Derrick Henry in. But this is the game where he going to turn it up. Watch. Mark my words. Hey, Tennessee fans, watch. I would love a Tennessee win and have the Raiders start 0-3. I just don't see it. I just think that Tennessee team <laughs> in Tennessee, like I said, I'll be, I'll be a sucker for the home team. I'm going with Tennessee. Yeah. I want to see Derrick Henry do what he does. Man, that man in the backfield is crazy. Do y'all know his speed on Madden is like 94? That's faster than every receiver on the Redskins. I'm sorry, on the Commanders. That's faster than a lot of receivers. He's 94. He's big as shit. Terrence, you but this nigga running? Terrence, all I'm going to tell you is that he had eight fantasy points last week and eight this week because he's been doing trash. They've been locking his ass up. He got locked up by the Giants. So we're going to see we'll if see. you can get past Crosby and Chandler. They, he needs say. a threat. He needs a threat on the outside so he can run. No, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Trey trying to get there. Washington Commanders are hosting the hot. Philadelphia Eagles. Yep, and this is my upset alert. Y'all know who I'm going to pick, but I'm also saying this is an upset alert. Eagles fans know this is a division rival game. Eagles fans are not saying we are going to bust the commanders. They're saying we should beat them, but Terrence, nobody is saying that. Nobody Eagles is saying fans that. Are. Eagles fans are. Terrence, no, they're not. The Eagles fans know they should beat us. But the same way when we were good and we played Philly, we know, bro, this is any given Sunday with this division. I had the Eagles beating y'all by 20. The Eagles should dog us. I will say that. But I think in Washington, we can make this a fucking game. That's what I think. I think Washington can make this a game with the Eagles. Think about it. Y'all high mighty. Y'all got two good wins. Even dog that team last week. Yeah, we this, we that. You're going to come and get knocked in your mouth. Think about it. You 2-0, you feeling yourself? It take a division rival to knock you right in your mouth on your shit. I think they'll beat us, but I don't know if they come out and just bust our ass. If we don't go out there and play scared, if we go out there and play like we supposed to play, yeah. think about it. If they can get the run game going, Philly, mm -hmm. they going to dog us. But if it's an air show, if it's throw versus throw, I don't know. I think we can compete. Y'all put up 28 points two weeks. We can compete in the air. Darius Slay had a crazy game last week. Yeah, so guess what, Terry? Guess what? And Bradbury Jahan. is known to go off in Washington. Mm-hmm. Guess what, Jahan, Terry? Move out the way so Curtis Samuel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Curtis Samuel is the one they need to watch. But y'all do got little zippy mm -hmm. weapons. Because if you put Slay and Bradbury on uh, Dotson and Samuel, you still got Terry. Mm -hmm. Those three? Think about if we had Diami. 
And he was the Amon Ross St. Brown uh, <laughs> bill. We will be dogs. I Imagine got, Jahan, mm-hmm. Terry, Samuel, Amon Ra. We would have <laughs> the best tandem in the league. We would have the best receiver for in the league. Y'all That'd be would. crazy. Every day to see. All right, I got the Eagles, though. I got the Eagles winning this game convincingly because I feel like y'all going to fold. We might. That I'm Jack Del Rio them. defense. Hopefully, if they – Eagles, if y'all beat us, beat the dog snot out of us so we is can get Ch- rid of Is Chase people. Young coming back? Chase this Young not coming back for about five weeks. I mean, for about three or four weeks. So, we'll probably see Philly at the end of the year. If that D-line don't get pressure on Jalen and Jalen get to start doing his runs because he was running crazy. Yeah. They said Jack Del Rio's kryptonite is a mobile quarterback. He – is done. <laughs> <laughs> a mobile quarterback that can just get the first down? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you finish. All right. Jaguars, the Chargers. I'm going to go with the Chargers. I'm going with the Chargers, too, in L.A. so far. I think the Jaguars are hype. I'm literally picking my whole division. Y'all go look at – people like, got a nerve to say that the Jaguars. Yeah, the Jaguars are legit. Y'all go look at both the Jaguars games when they played us. They, they bust at, the Colts' ass. Did you see how many interceptions the Colts dropped? I mean, yeah. I don't but, know what the hype around Trevor Lawrence is, but I haven't. Seen, I watched the game when he played against us. He didn't look that good at all. They were trying to say NTN dropped two touchdowns. Yeah, he did. But also, did y'all miss that this man, uh, Trevor Lawrence, overthrew like two yeah, or three he's touchdowns? He's not perfect, but he's got potential. There was a lot of dropped interceptions in that Colts game. That's all I'm going to say. And I don't think Justin Herbert and them is ones to play with. You know what, Jaguar? Go ahead and go out there and beat the Chargers. We'd love that. But I'm picking the Chargers to win. I'm picking Chargers. If that's if Herbert plays, you'll be questionable. That For real. Rib, that rib. I still got the Chargers winning, I even still. if Herbert don't play. I don't know about that. Who is we'll the second guy? Tyrod? Uh, no, Tyrod is in uh, <laughs> New York. Um, Rams are going to see the Cardinals. Kyler Murray. Um, I'm going L.A. I feel, like the, I feel like the Rams are a little shaky this year. Y'all did all of that fighting and let the Falcons come all the way back almost. Thank mm-hmm. God for Jalen Ramsey catching that, that pick. But uh, does D, D-, D- Hop come back this, this week? Nah, not yet. Okay. They going to be Rams. I'm picking the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals, y'all play good. Y'all came back against the Raiders, but low key, the Pe- Rams. People forget that the Cardinals was literally like 10 0 at one point. Or 9-0 at one point. And it, and it was, was the beast. only undefeated team. That squad, Kyler, his zippy, mm-hmm. we'll see. You're going up against Aaron Donald. Yeah. So try it. <laughs> Look, your whole O-line. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the Rams. Even though, the, even though the, I respect the Cardinals, I'm going with the Rams. Turn up. All right, y'all. Atlanta versus Seattle. That's a division rivalry game, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going ATL. ATL. I'm going Atlanta. ATL, go, I'm, ATL, I'm thinking Jacob. that Atlanta finna step into Seattle and take that dub, man. I'm going to pick. Um, I'm picking. I guess I'll. I guess I'll pick Atlanta to get their first win. But it's at Seahawks. The 12 is going to be loud and proud. They trying to get a second win. I'm going to pick the Seahawks because it's at Seahawks. It's at Seahawks. I watched, this, play. I watched this Falcons fan talk about how he was so happy to have Mariota, even though they're 0-2. He said he feels way happier with Mariota back there than he did with having Matt Ryan back there standing as a statue for 10 years. He said, I watched the Colts fans swear that they got this great guy, and we watched him for 10-plus years. And it's just like we have nothing to say for him besides one of the biggest meltdowns in Super Bowl history. He said, other than that, what do we have? A bunch of wasted wide receiver talent is what he said. So he Damn. said even at 0 and 2, he feels confident with Mariota. And I and low key, I like Mariota well, over uh, Gino. We're gonna have to see. Who did Seattle play last week? They got their ass whooped by uh the 49ers and Jimmy G. Yeah, see, I'm going Mariota. Cal Pitts. They Yeah. I'm picking the Seahawks because it's at the Seahawks. That crowd bust our ass the first week. Um, Packers and Buccaneers are very, I'm going that's Bucks. That's probably America's game of the week. Yeah. I'm going Bucks. I'm going Bucks too. You don't have enough weapons, A-Rod, for that defense. That defense is insane. I think Leonard Fournette, Brady, and that receiving core. Vita Vea and that D-line. I would love to see Aaron Rodgers go out there and beat Brady though. I would love to see that. I picked the Packers the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. Or not. 
I'm picking Brady because first of all, you robbed me for the MVP last year. I'm going Brady because I don't. Th- I think Brady takes this game is going to take this game a little serious. He's been like, all right, bet y'all think I'm gonna lose to Buddy Boy over there? <laughs> bet. <laughs> no bullshit. I got Buccaneers too. All right, Sunday night football, San Francisco versus Denver. I'm going San Fran. I'm picking- I cannot for the life of me pick the the field goal kicking Denver Broncos. This is where y'all get punched in the mouth for real. Let me tell you something. This Boom. Is, this is what I'll say about us. I'm picking my Broncos to win in a statement game. Like, we have to show that we're just having first week jitters. Because this is my thing. You know all our media is talking about? How great our defense has been. That D-line, that D-line. Oh, yeah, all this pressure. All this, that is great. We played the fucking Seahawks and the Texans. Two trash O-lines. Well, now Trent Williams is coming to town. Mm-hmm. So, Chubb, hopefully you can get around that. And then they got that other dude that's a center. He's a beast. So, I feel like there's a very, very high chance that we could go out here on Sunday night and get washed. Because mm-hmm. our play calling is trash. Hell, has been so far. And honestly, we put all of our chips on Russ. We put all of our chips on Russ. But... I just Not feel like except when the game is on the line. This is my then thing. You put it all on McManus. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have to go out here and show that we can win. We got to show we can put up points. We put up 16 points the first game, 16 points the second game. You're not beating that elite team if you can't score touchdowns. Because when Josh Allen and boys come to town, they're putting up 30 at least. Mm-hmm. So we have to go out here against the 49ers that have all these weapons. Ayuk, Debo, um, they have so many weapons. We have we have to go out here and show we can beat them. That's all. This is gonna be a proving game for you. Are they two and zero or one and one? They one and one. Okay, y'all one and one. We one and one, but we one and one against the Texans and Seahawks. They one and one against the Houston uh, or who you say? They beat the hell out of the um, Seahawks that we lost to. Okay. And who did they play the first week? Uh, who did they play the first week? And it was a little rocky. Hey, the Bears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They played the Bears so, and Soldier. Y'all both kind of have something to prove in this game. Yeah, but they played the Bears and Soldier. It was disgusting out there. Yeah, honestly, this is going to be a big game for y'all. Uh, I think y'all are in trouble. Because now Jimmy G gets to step out there and say, uh, I'm playing with a different purpose. You know Jimmy G gets like $100,000 if he wins. Mm-hmm. Them bonuses coming Them through. Them bonuses. Man. So, yeah, I'm trying to bust y'all ass. And I'm trying to prove to this organization that I'm supposed to be the starter. So, y'all are playing a team that's hot. You're playing a team that was stepped in that ste- low key stepped into a Super Bowl before. Jimmy they what they went to the NFC Championship just last year, right? With Jimmy, well, our defense has to show that they're a true defense. Y'all about <laughs> to get y'all ass whooped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't getting ready to whoop y'all. But all right, Monday night, I'm looking forward to this one. Cowboys at New York Giants, and believe it or not. I think the Giants take I this. I think the Giants take it in I met think the life. Giants I'm sorry. take this. They just said that Lawrence Taylor was getting ready to be in attendance because he said, I want to see this Micah Parsons kid. And people are like, oh, that's bad news for the Giants. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. If there's anybody on this Cowboys team that's going to show up to play, it's that young man right there. I think if I'm the Giants and I said we got a legend coming in town, bet. We're going to show our legend exactly why he's not. Compared to you. Not but that Giants O-line you ain't. <laughs> Shit, if I got anything that's going to that's what you know how you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. That would be my mentality, too. Imagine Champ Bailey comes in and says, I want to see this Jalen Ramsey kid when y'all play against Jalen Ramsey. If I'm the corners, I'm like, yo, I'm Pat Sir fucking Tan. I'm wearing your jersey the same colors you wore when you played. He's not. I'm going to show, you know what I'm saying? I'm showing off. Or if I'm a receiver, oh, bet. You're, you're not going to show our guy. It is. Yeah, it is wild. <laughs> that you're a GOAT. Fuck that. I think Sterling Shepard, Saquon. They're going to be tough. Let's get it. That's going to be a good-ass oh, game. But I'm going New that. York. Turn up, man. Shout out Whole Nine Watch. Keeping us locked in every week. Yes, sir. Shout out to the people and the ladies who stick around for the NFL picks. I know sometimes it can be tedious. It can be long-winded. But, like, it's definitely a good, good fun sports segment. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, and I, you know, saying so far so good. I've been positive on each uh, each week. Um, <laughs> I was like eleven and five. I'm one trying week, to stay I above five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was nine and seven one week, eleven and five the week before. I'm just trying to keep that shit going, dog. 
I feel like this pod was a goodie though. Well, you know, we talked about some real intellectual shit. One nineteen. Turn up, man. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Everybody be safe. And look. You loud as shit out of nowhere. My bad. That cold weather is OT dub. I can't wait. Hoodie season.